Dun, 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 dun. I want to pet that dog on a scruffy little head. I'm going to leave it on screen. <laughs> We're going to start with uh, Jack being Jack, I guess. <laughs> like... I got a notification of <laughs> Ethan. Yep, notification. So that's that's the tweet for you, gentlemen. Welcome to part two, people who may be hearing this right now or not, because streams take a second to uh, it's line live. up. Good. I, can't I can see, see comments. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So uh, Jack said, people that genuinely believe thinking you misrepresented <laughs> their opinions about films is on the same level as calling someone less than human should generally be avoided at all costs. So... People that genuinely believe thinking you misrepresented their opinions about films. Is that what Wolf and Rag's uh, position was? Do you guys remember? Wait, did he quote tweet me on that? Uh, I don't think. Oh, yeah, it's above it. You've been quote tweeted, I think. Yes, I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, weird take. Uh, we said it was mischaracterization, which affects our integrity as content creators and can actually deal damage to what is essentially our careers. Very simple. It's not, you said my opinion on a movie was lame. A little bit more complicated than that, and we've pretty much shown it in the in part one, so. Nice try, Jack. Um, and I like how we had to sandwich it at the end with, like, you were responsible for ass, but, like, that's such a Oh, yeah. So you probably read that. So shocked attempt. this is the crowd that led to the mass harassment of the Star Wars crew members. It's like... Just gotta double down on the idea that you're this objectively terrible piece of shit. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm the worst. Criticisms and uh, yeah, then that's that's a criticism you can levy to pretty much everyone who's been critical of uh, Star Wars in public, you know. Hmm. And then we go. Yes, you see, sometimes <laughs> it is frustrating when someone is disingenuous about the points you make. For instance, most of the points made towards me in this stream. As an adult, I am able to be frustrated without mindlessly yelling slurs at them. Um. <laughs> Wait. He's 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 very much in the position that slurs are just worse uh, or insults are worse. Um, I'd have to know which ones were slurs that they've made. I'm pretty. I don't think anyone's called Jack a slur. They've said he's sub All I heard was uh, yeah. All I heard was uh, Wolf calling him a pussy, which he is. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean uh, that's unfair. I mean, it's, it's a whole. This is the, the the part that I find really interesting is um. Oh, he said the room is not objectively bad. By the way. <laughs> Whatever, Jack. Um, the so the, the 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 take that like, um, how do we define just how really bad an insult is versus a mischaracterization or something like that? That's pretty much a conversation of ethics at that point. Instead of it, because right now all we're dealing with is you did a thing that was bad, and then we go your thing was worse, and they go no your thing was worse. It's like, okay, this is gonna end well. That's a pretty good summary, actually. Yeah. Um, that's just about the insult stuff. Obviously, with the content criticism, he's basically just said, this is what your content is, and I'm going to disagree with it. And I'm like, but that's not my content. And he goes, eh, it doesn't matter. But I suppose he'd accuse the same of me. It's just that people can watch the streams and come to their conclusion, I suppose. Like, what else can I do other than provide context and arguments? Um, that's it. And, by the way, Jack, um, if you're still watching, um... Because if you are this... being an asshole and then saying, then saying, yeah, but they're being an asshole as well, doesn't mean that you're less of an asshole. Yeah, Someone just take the high ground. Honestly, asshole. you will look so good if we are here, sort of nitpicking you and teasing you, and you just very calmly just explain, no, that's wrong. Here's what I really think. But instead, you're just doubling down and looking like more and more of a cunt every time. Accusing me of like, like it's, perpetuating it's Star Wars crew abuse. It's like, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's, like, it's essentially like you've been caught you like, literally on your shoulders. Murdering. Imagine you've been caught literally murdering someone and then the police are like, and you go, that guy over there killed two people. <laughs> then uh, imagine, he killed then more. you think magically you're not going to get arrested anymore. Well, <laughs> again, um, the cop goes welfare is fair. That He's... freak murdered two people. <gasps> Did you just call me a freak? Well, in that analogy, he'd be like, yeah, well, murdering three people is worse than two people, so I'm right. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, I didn't do anything. Okay. But yeah, uh, is everyone ready to continue with this masterpiece? If, if you really, <laughs> if you really yeah, want to take the high ground by going, yeah, we all suck, but they suck more. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can, if he can do that if he wants, I'm fine if that's the position he wants to take. Yeah, so for context of anyone watching this in the future, this is a second part. You probably would have seen EFAP 22 at this point, which is the longest EFAP in existence in a singular video. Um, and we had to cut it off in case we hit the cap, and now we're back. 
for as long as this will take. So we're assuming it should take about an hour to finish the video, and we're going to do super chats, and we're going to look at some comments from his channel because there's some fun comments, and then you're, we're all going to have a laugh with with that, and then that should be it. So that is the on what's on the docket. We are forty forty eight into the video. Is everybody comfy? Very yes. comfy. Let's do it as comfy as I can be. Jay didn't say anything. I'll assume he's uncomfortable. I did. And I'm I fine said with yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> he was drowned bad. out. He was marginalized. JJ Binks. This bad. This good. This bad. Hell, if you do it enough, it's just like a real analysis. It's like YouTube media critic self-help guidance. Many have shared that they want a safe version of my video for their children to understand and learn from, which I am more than happy to provide in this instance. Me, Wolf, and Rags, and a talent, a gift, whatever, to be able to discern media down to its uh, composing parts. Well, where someone sees a scene, we might see um, a script instead. Be like, oh, look at the components moving. And along the How way- How those two clips even- I will tell you what he's heard in those clips versus what they are, okay? So what he's heard is me say, I'm amazing at everything that I do, and I'm so skilled and so talented as are you, Wolf, as long as you agree with everything I say. And so we, we are the best ever. Also, I make my videos for kids. Like, that's what he's hear hearing, I think, and he considers that a contradiction uh, from me to be like, I'm, I'm such a skilled and talented person, and then I make critical analysis of media for, for kids. You know? Um, so he's taking your, your facetious statements out of context again. Um, well, I don't know if I would... So well, the context uh, of one of them is, this is a series intended for adults, essentially, but if you want children to be able to watch it, as a lot of people requested, I was like, okay... I won't swear. So that yeah. should be enough. And I, obviously, the, 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 I will, I'll mainly only be showing anything from the Star Wars movies themselves, so as long as the kids can see those, they can see my analysis. I'm trying to think of if I've ever put any kind of violent... I don't think I've ever used nudity in the Star Wars critique, so it should be okay, but yeah. Well, you can't have nudity on YouTube, so... And the other uh, discussion is me and Wolf talking about why it is that um, our work would be valued, and I was like, like, I would say that we have a skill, and this, this applies to all the people in this, this call, I, I, I would happily admit myself um, that we have there's there's something in media that we're able to do that a lot of people find harder or don't have any interest in and thus they prefer that we do it for them and create bite-sized entertainment that they can essentially do it really quickly in the form of a video with research or whatever and you can call it a skill or a talent whatever you want um, but it's a thing that is valued by other humans because they lack it or they don't have interest in it despite interest in what it can create that yeah. makes sense. So he's put yeah, those so two statements like together and he's not explained the, the contradiction. He's just let us assume the something from it, and which is precisely yeah. what he accused of being bad in my videos. So, yeah. And he's trying food. to define what criticism is and then what real criticism is, which. Yes. And what in depth criticism is and what deep criticism is and what nitty gritty criticism is. I don't remember <laughs> all these words. Vision of my video for their children to understand. You, you described uh, Fallout 76 as being benefited by a tactile experience, and then Rags was like, what does tactile mean? And then he said, um, the feel of the game, and then Rags was like, what does that mean? <laughs> it just keeps going. You know, the game feel, floaty, all those other meaningless words. It all makes sense if you think about it. And then learn when you, from When you touch and you and feel the game, this is the experience you get when you just fondle the game just pick it up feel the it. tits in the hentai game it's real just pick up the case and lick the case if it's a file yeah, a tactile it's like a digital download it's a kind of sensation you can't do that when my character gets shot in the face i feel it you flip back <laughs> in your chair and you're like ah. <laughs> immersion <laughs> ah. I'm happy to it provide so in good. this it's instance Ready Player one is a great wolf film. and rags and many many other people have what you could call a talent, a gift, whatever, to be able to discern media down to its uh, composing parts. Well, where someone sees a scene, we might see um, a script instead. Be like, oh, look at the components moving. And along the way, you've forgotten that perspectives are perspectives, even if they're based on the same objective thing. It's the kind of mindset that leads you to ignoring that some people might just think visuals are an important part of a Star Wars movie. And Implying that I think visuals are not important. Yeah. Did you forget that perspectives were perspectives? <laughs> this yes. is the most. This is the most bad faith arguments on the planet. <laughs> I know. It's like, well, the the commenter at one point in part one that was like, "Oh, come on, Jack. Come on. <laughs> give us, give us a bit more slack." 
Some Why don't you let people have their opinions? Jesus Christ, you fucking elitist. You Longman, Longman bad. Yep. <laughs> Longman bad. I just think visuals are an important part of a Star Wars movie, and that's no less credible than you not liking it when Luke drinks the milk. Why? The kind of mindset that leads you to blindly say, that's objectively a five or a six, without really thinking about what that even means. What makes you think that you I don't think, think about what enough. that means? <laughs> you didn't Which, think hard enough, I guess. So, so Did when you? I say something, if if you catch me saying it's a subjective five out of six, or five or six out of ten, does that mean I don't know what that means to me? I'm confused by his point here. He's he's like, I should be considering what that means. Like, what makes you think do I you don't? Movies objective scores out of ten. Like, do you ever say? I mean, I suppose you reach judgments about their quality, but you never really go. This Not is typically, no. This good and this bad. I could guesstimate yeah. a, a sort of thing, like I did with Infinity War, where I was like, the character's super strong, but the world building and the story suffer in different ways. Um, and so, like like I said, uh, an objective robot might, I said, might reach a 5 or a 6, vaguely. That's somewhere I'd probably put it. And, and you'd be like, I don't know. You're like, what are you basing that on? It's like, oh, literally a, a guess of where it would probably sit if you were to do an objective assessment, which I haven't done. Um, I wouldn't mind doing, but just I've got other things that I, I wanna I wanna look into, and um, it's a complicated thing to get, so uh, it's much easier to sort of reach the conclusion of are the major payoffs in the movie, the entire purpose of the progression of the story, are they all fucked and based on contradictions in the world, the story, and the characters? Like, if yes, the movie's bad, or well, the story's bad anyway. This it, it, in terms of the craft, it's just fucked. Um, and then if the opposite is true more than likely going to be good. But then you get, it's tough when you get to stuff like, uh, the characters are great, but the story is awful. And you'd be like, hmm. Then you have to start thinking about how the payoffs mesh with the, um, uh, the that progression. Point, at the point where you go, oh, this is great, this is awful. Playing objective criteria. You're, uh, you're cutting out. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, the point, at the point where, uh, where, like, something is really good and something else is to reach any kind of objective conclusion about the quality of a movie in terms of like a rating out of 10 or whatever, you would have to apply subjective criteria, even if the measurements you've made are still objective. Uh, it's, it's just that that's, that's, a, that's a great conversation, that one, right? We don't even get to that point with this because they, they've not even uh, uh, like addressed what the arguments I'm actually making. Uh, the thing out of 10 is, is, uh, is confusing a lot of the time because it's just like, um, you can only get a, like, you couldn't go further. It's like something point, something, 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 something out of 10 to get an exact thing. And it's like, yeah, I don't think that's really possible for me, but, um, you can absolutely safely tell if a, if a, a story is entirely built on, on contradictive information, then it's failed to, uh, complete its, its purpose as a story by definition. Wait, did I miss the third uh, Eric segment? No, it's coming. Oh, oh you cannot like forget favorite this part. one. <laughs> and that's no less credible than you not liking it when Luke drinks the milk. Why? The kind of mindset that leads you to blindly say, that's objectively a five or a six, without really thinking about what that even means. Didn't I explain all of that in like what makes me love Infinity War? That's what the point of the end of the summary is? All of the characters I sum up in terms of their arcs, like that would be what I'm thinking about when I talk about why I subjectively adore the movie. Yeah, but he seems to cite, uh, you know, special effects as like, you know, got you there. You don't like special effects and you don't think they matter. It's like, well, no, I didn't say that. I just said it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things when, you know, time starts to pass. It's like I'm not movie here as someone who's never really done it. going to be remembered literally just for its special effects. Mm -hmm. Especially in this day and age when basically everything has amazing special effects. Mm -hmm. like the, a five the, or a the effects in Last Jedi don't make it stand out. They just make it... I guess for today's audience, they just make it palatable. Well, there's, yeah. there's another whole interesting and complicated discussion. How much do visuals uh, tie in to what you would address as quality? How do we judge visuals? It's complicated, but it's not something where you just immediately go, you know what, it's all subjective, leave me alone. Like, no, we, we should give it a shot. We should think about how it affects other movies, uh, why people do certain things when they when creating these things in craft, what lighting is for, composition is for, how you edit and, and frame in movies. There's loads of little aspects that are all really important and have purpose. It's just like ignoring all of these things from the, um, the craft 
you just talk to the people who do these things, and if you tell them, like, hey, I pick up a, ca a camera and just point it randomly and spin it around, it's like, I'm a director just like you. They'd be like, <laughs> yeah, uh, give me back my camera. <laughs> Six, without really thinking about what that even means. I'm not here as someone who's never done any of the things I think Mauler's doing. In fact, my two most popular videos on Sky High and Alice in Wonderland are both super rambly with way too much summary fluff and little distinction between a personal nitpick and a legitimate argument. He doesn't oh, personally look. distinct the words he uses? What a He's just like you, only better. Oh, we can, <laughs> we can identify with him. Is he implying that but, he wasn't objective enough? That's actually... It wasn't... He, he wasn't something enough. Super, I'm not 100% sure. Super rambly with way... Super rambly. I don't know if that's provable. Because he doesn't believe the whole objective thing. So I, This is the thing. Where are your standards coming from? You're telling me that by your definition of what rambly is, I am that and you are not that, but sometimes you are that, and it's based on how you feel of what rambly is. It's just like, oh god, so painful. Well, that was the thing, if that was his entire criticism, you wouldn't necessarily have to disagree with it, you just be I mean, that is your opinion. Well, yeah, in his worldview, I can shake all this. He says that at the end. He says, all oh, this is just my opinion. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, I honestly think he said that as bait, because surely if he's watched all your content, he knows. Yeah, he's seen the TFA stuff, so he knows. Too much summary fluff and little distinction between a personal nitpick and a legitimate argument. But these are issues I want to recognize and grow from, and seeing your most recent review fall into the exact same holes, well, I hadn't seen this video before then, Jack, so how could I have learned from it yet? <laughs> Come on, he, give me some He already knows also. the problems, you see? He's above you. He's, he's looking mm. at you. Oh, look at look at Mahler make all those mistakes I used to make. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Also, it's it's, he's, um, he's implying he's learning while I'm not. It's really funny because uh, when, uh, you know, I've been just kind of been like passively tweeting while this has been going on. And uh, he was like talking to somebody. And then he said, well, we're in talks on, uh, you know, doing a one-on-one -on -one conversation right now. And 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 I just said, because I had been a little bit hostile before, I, I just said, I'd, I'd be perfectly happy with that, like, totally sincerely. And he just replied, dot, 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 who are you? And then I just replied, I'm the guy who's on EFAP right now, you'll hear me later. It's like, how fucking <laughs> smug and rude can you be to someone who's genuinely being nice to you? I don't think they can tell the difference between sincerity I, and attacks. I don't think so. Like, I think how they define all this shit them. is hilarious. They'll just be like, you said... <laughs> Because it's already it's all it's all in part one. <laughs> it's all the shit that uh, that we've been the through. Mental gymnastics. Yeah. Still find that interesting. I felt to. Mm. Right. Uh, I still find that interesting that he says like, oh, the, I didn't have enough legitimate arguments. Like, wait, what do you? Can you define what you mean by legitimate arguments? Are you meaning like objective? Well, unfortunately, criteria? he's only done this to set up his point that I don't learn while he does. That's the only reason he's put this in here. He's evolved as a critic. Oh yeah. To recognize also, and grow from someone, and Sorry, really quickly. Uh, someone in chat, uh, Shogoth88, said sincerity is implied. <laughs> I really like that meme. Okay, go on. Your most recent review fall into the exact same holes. I felt a need to point out these methodological problems to you and the fans, many of whom still it. confuse your- Oh, sorry. He- so his argument is I've, I- he's saying that I have now presented them to you when I was about to intrinsically be like, okay, so present them, because you haven't yet. And then I'm like, oh fuck, mm -hmm. he thinks he already has, sorry. Yeah. This is implies he actually knows your methodological Ego. techniques, which... Apparently... <laughs> most he doesn't believe in. ...you fall into the exact same holes. I felt a need to point... This video bad, because a lot of it is just summary of your content, so... Yeah, he's not making a lot of clearly points, he he's just sort of doing a play-by-play -play of my content. Yeah, clearly he's not really saying anything of value, and also I think he's probably a racist. And he's probably instigated a lot of attacks <laughs> across Europe. I don't know, I'm just saying. What? Do I have to prove also, points? Also, I think he's probably responsible for literally every person that's harassed you. Yep. That's probably just intrinsically true. Didn't God say that in the Bible at some point? I'm pretty sure that was a thing. <laughs> it's out these sure methodological it. problems to you and the fans, many of whom still confuse your CinemaSins format for deeper critique. Ooh. Okay. Got him. You haven't proven Got that him, shit, everyone. Jack. We can just do it yeah. right back at you. People confuse your snipes and your lack of context and your straw men for arguments. Yeah, how are we supposed to know that that's what his content if you suggested that we skip four hours of the uh, critique anyway? <sighs> Fucking uh, big brain time, boys. Yeah, mm -hmm. what else can you say, right? Um, what else? Can by you the say? way, I've actually used the CinemaSins format a little bit, actually. 
can you can do good stuff with it. I, I hope. Otherwise, I've wasted a lot of fucking time. I've gone on record <laughs> saying that Cinema Sins have made good points in their time. Yeah, sure. They make like three every video. Yeah, like a whole three guys, come on. That's being generous. Something deeper here, something not truly explored, and it ties together all these things talked about so far. But hey, what? maybe it'll all become clear very, very soon. Oh, oh, what is he talking about? <laughs> That... I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, let's 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 go ahead and go at it again. I, I'm not sure what he was saying there. Out these methodological problems to you and the fans, many of whom still confuse your cinema sins format for deeper critique. There is something deeper here, something not truly explored, and it ties together all these things talked about so far. But hey, maybe it'll all become. Is he saying that every point he's made in this video is now present as a flaw in my new video? Is that is that the point? Apparently, your technique of doing long form is not deeper, but there is a deeper way of doing things, and he doesn't know it, and we don't know it either. And mm -hmm. uh, what? Sh shut up. I, That's your opinion. What is his? What is his point? Like I don't. There's a mysterious, deeper meaning behind things. I don't know what it is. It's like okay. Real so deep. You, semantic Dragon said he's talking about how long it takes for more release videos. I don't think so. I don't really get that That's impression. Not what I'm getting. Maybe. Clear. Very, very soon. So Mahler. Is oh my. Oh god. Why is he? Sh what? Also, Why? if we can just, if, just for a second, if we can ignore the trauma we all just visually experienced. <laughs> Jack, I appreciate your use of the coin sound effect from Ape Escape Two. I got that reference. I love that game. We may be friends yet. I am <laughs> placing in a shield. On, we'll see. On Just screen. put your fucking shirt back on. <laughs> no, his hair exactly reaches his Look, the nipples. chat will not be victimized. Okay, we it's will. So pink. But uh, let's let's have a look. There is frequently it accused itself. of believing his opinions he are objective. He has a freakishly and smooth chest. This isn't actually quite. Oh, that's that's not an insult. It's just I I don't understand how. How what? Just, sorry. That is a scarily smooth chest. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> It's Eric, just... Jay is interested, just saying. Things talked about so far. <laughs> Call me but hey, maybe it'll all become clear very, very soon. So Mahler is frequently accused of believing his opinions are objective, and this isn't actually quite true. He actually released a video recently that puts a lot of it to rest. So that statement alone, when I first heard that, I was like, Eric, thank you. Thank you. But it's uh, it's just an out. It, 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 he's he's fucking with us, unfortunately. So the problem is that his 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 real opinions are equally bullshit. And the word opinion is thrown around far more than references to the topic being discussed. The purpose behind it in this case is to champion the idea that there is no such thing as good or bad content, that everyone is simply sharing their perspective. You know, the mentality that everyone gets a medal no matter what. Participation is now enough to celebrate quality. Everybody who was in the race now gets a first place medal. See... Oh my goodness, he changed positions. I'll do it. So apparently your your obs your observations are sorry, your whatever comments are objective or bullshit. There's no in between. Yeah, and uh so the point I was addressing in that video was that um a lot of people will fail to have strong references and then when criticized they say, Hey man, it's just my opinion, everyone's got one. And it's like, I know that's your opinion, so that doesn't really to change anything from what I said, but okay. Um, and so it's used as a shield. That is my point in that section, among other things, but he's, he's sort of referenced it here to explain what I mean between the difference between objective and subjective. I don't know. It's not really the right clip, I would say, that's all. Mahler simply creates a distinction between two types of statements that you can make about a piece of art. There's a subjective and objective. A subjective statement would be that you thought it looked really cool, it had nice themes, it made you feel feelings, etc. While an objective statement is provable, it is based off the stuff that you're looking at, uh, indisputable facts. It had dozens of plot holes. Uh, the character writing was inconsistent, all, all that jazz. The problem here is that supporting your assessments of quality with examples from the work itself doesn't actually make it objective, it just makes it well-founded. What? So the question becomes, what is the difference between an objective argument and a well-founded argument? I find that this becomes incredibly easy to debunk when he... When he what, sorry? 
when he brings up his example to try and prove this, you can like immediately just say no. But I mean, there is definitely a distinction there. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm curious he... of how they because it almost implies, almost implies that it's possible to have an objective argument. So I'm curious what he would define an objective argument as if it's possible. If he thinks it's not possible, I don't know. Well, the thing is, Let's... why why do you even need an objective argument? Like, once you have object, objective proof or evidence, it's like, listen, Working. it's right there. You you just see it. It's you don't have to argue it. It's right in yeah, front of your like face. It's almost like your argument is created from objective evidence. I'm not sure. It's, this is very semantic levels of like how exactly yeah. you. This is the kind of thing you need to be in a one to one conversation with to be able to figure it out. Uh, we don't necessarily understand exactly what he's trying to say. Itself doesn't actually make it objective. It just makes it well founded. Let's say that you point out that this knife disappears mid swipe. Where did it go? And you're right. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. That knife is, is, it's gone. It was there and now it's gone. Well done. You're very observant. So your but if we were... <laughs> I don't understand. If Bazinga. Why, I don't Got understand him. what the fucking, there better be a point to the Maybe shirt, that's seriously. the deeper theme he was going for. It just things are vanishing and it's not always Maybe a it's a, it's That, that a better be the tech. point. In which it's... point, bravo, I guess, but please, uh, the joke's over now. I just desperately hope we don't find out if he's wearing clothes from the way he's dead. Oh. No. Stay tuned. Oh. Using the word correctly, um, <laughs> it's gonna the be a objective cliffhanger. statement would be that the knife is missing. What? You haven't actually said whether the film is good or bad or well made or poorly made until you can say why this knife trick made the film worse. So, oh. so uh, oh. the first problem here is that uh, I'm not sure that I've ever explained why the knife disappearing has uh, made the movie worse, but um, I never would have expected that I'd have to explain to somebody that a weapon disappearing into thin air makes the movie worse. Should we do it anyway? No. Clearly <laughs> some people need I it. I just really like the the condescending good for you Mahler. You fucking notice that. Do you want a cookie? It's like are are you just okay with things vanishing? Is that not something I should take note of? Is that um, a good is that an addition to yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Is it like, better? This is, you know, the first time we responded to this was it was called delving into the mind of Eric Taxon. It's like, yeah, it does feel like you're entering a world where it's just like what is what? So um how how it, it, I I leave this open to the floor. Does anyone want to give a shot at and I know it, it sounds so condescending, and I'm sorry about this. How is a movie or story made worse when enemy weapons disappear into thin air at random? I'll give it a shot. Um, it is, you would be incredibly hard pressed to argue that it was done intentionally and you legitimately believe The Last Jedi was supposed to be bad. Like, it was a parody. Now, the fact that it's unintentional doesn't inherently be bad, but. It is, it, is a, it is what you would consider a mistake, and seeing something that you can immediately identify as a mistake as that in the movie is going to potentially pull you out of it. And I doubt there's going to be anyone who has a, a positive reaction to that, and that like, increases their enjoyment of the film, unless they're literally watching it because they think it's bad, and every bad thing they happen, every bad thing that happens, they think, you know, they, they think it's funny or whatever. Fake that is my take. take. Um, I was just going to say that um, I think there's more to be said to it to identify why it's is specifically bad for a story versus um, how it couldn't be interpreted as a positive experience beyond parody. I still think that's a fair it's, argument. Yeah, if you take it out of the movie context, let's say the writer just forgets that you know some other guy was wielding a second knife, and you're like, wait a second, he just described it previously in a scene where his one hand had one knife and his one hand had the other knife, and they were fighting. And then all of a sudden, he only, he's only describing one arm with one knife. He's like, what, what happened to that second knife? It maybe didn't literally disappear from the universe, but it's no longer described. So you're thinking, okay, why would the writer even bother showing me this in the first place? So it's, it's as if the, the writer is forgetful. And in this case, obviously, it's a technical control of yeah, CGI like and thing up. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the effect is the same where it's just removed for the sake of keeping the storyline going like a deus ex machina device, only it's a literal CGI machine coming in and, and taking it away. It's the same literary effect. It takes away the agency of the, the main character, the actual threat they're, they're in, um, the writing consistency, of course, because all of a sudden things aren't there anymore for, for whatever reason. It, it's just bad. 
I it's, would. It's um, bad on several levels. I would choose the argument of like progression and stakes. It's, it's one of the most fundamentally understandable things, right? Like the reason we get A to B to C to D to D to to, to the end of the alphabet, where the explosive payoff happens, is uh, the easy translation would be that we get shown what Luke is capable of throughout the OT, and then he faces Darth Vader when we know what he's capable of too. So now the stakes are set in terms of what can be lost for both and what can be gained and what their strengths and weaknesses are. So we're all on board with that. We've been given that information. We can watch this unfold now, knowing all those rules. And then, you know, Luke's lightsaber disappears. And we're like, whoa, when was that? Yeah, in the next shot, like, his weapon's just gone. And then Luke goes, no, what? And then Vader's like, what? <laughs> and the Emperor goes, here's another one. I don't know what the fuck is going on there. <laughs> we're like, wait, what? Okay. And then he has it back. We're like, fine, we're back to normal. And then, then Vader disappears. And he's like, oh, fuck. And then Luke kills him. We're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> There's so much Don't happening that's just, um, and so you might be like, that's just feelings you're describing. I'm just like, so what I'm talking about is understanding what uh, the, the rules and limits are on both sides in order to generate stakes. That's what stakes are. You can't have stakes if there are no rules. Because you'd just be like, couldn't Luke just fly away at any moment? And you're like, no, he can't fly. And you go, huh, okay. And Luke just, just use the force on Vader. It's like, well, it's established that you can't just arbitrarily use the force on a force user because they'll just counter it. And you're like, hmm. Okay, so I guess this really is down to this sword skill and potential force use, and you're like, pretty much, yeah. Uh, unless weapons disappear, and you're like, wait, what? Weapons can just disappear? And it's like, that changes the fight completely. How can I be invested in what's going to happen if someone's weapon can randomly disappear? Am I just waiting for that to happen or not happen? And that's when you realize very quickly, oh, the, the plot armor kept her alive to the point where she can make weapons disappear. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. Um I'm going to bring up that I, I don't know if anyone either in the, on the stream or in the chat can confirm this, but I'm pretty sure there is a scene in Return of the Jedi where Darth Vader, for literally no reason, is holding Luke's lightsaber in between cuts. Uh, Possibly. Because of a deleted scene where like Luke dropped his lightsaber or something and Vader picked it up. Right. That is my understanding of it. I, I don't know if anyone can confirm that for me in the chat. If that's accurate. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. I, no, I am of the opinion that <laughs> Return of the Jedi is a much better film than The Last Jedi, both on you know a subjective personal level and an objective quality, you know, standards of writing level. Uh, but is that still a flaw? Fucking yeah, I wouldn't say it's as big of a flaw because it's I I think harder to notice. Oh, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't but... argue it for, in that way. You could be like, isn't the rule set by him holding it that it can arbitrarily teleport and i would be like um ar arguably yes but it never it didn't take place uh in a moment that uh undid the stake of because basically if, if if you're keeping track of what's happening with ray she's about to be killed then she's not you know like, yeah, it doesn't oh. impact the plot at all it immediately yeah, that... saved her life in that very moment while vader p holding luke's lightsaber and then not having it a second later is just like oh, oh. Weird. Yeah, did that did that mistake just affect what had happened to the movie overall, like you know, to a character interaction or a scene or anything like that? Uh, and, no, it didn't. It didn't like, no, then it was like it's there, it but affect. it's not a huge damage. It didn't affect the the outcome of the story, but it would be very difficult to argue the thing it's, other than a flaw, even if it's just a, an incredibly tiny flaw that like, yeah, almost anyone watching it won't notice. It's so still like, you can't technically if, like. If the if guy with the two knives, the film again, you'd undo it. If the guy with the two knives did his flippy flippies and um, made his stance when Ray was like three meters away from him, then his knife disappeared, and then it showed Ray charged him, and then his knife reappeared when she came at him. I would be like, that was a weird editing error. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily affect the stakes because nothing would have changed in the time that his 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 sword knife thing disappeared and reappeared. It's the fact that it disappears the second it connects with her, as if she has a literal plot armor around her. <laughs> but if weapons hit it, they disintegrate into thin air. It's like, wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, but these are really interesting conversations that get to the, 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 the nitty-gritty, as I would probably refer to it as, of um, progression in stories and why we don't allow this to happen, lack of continuity. So these are all standards of like storytelling. So you'd be like, the movie is worse because of it. I changed that to the storytelling becomes inconsistent as a result of it, which are negative qualities for a story to have when the whole point is to have consistent progression to generate stakes to get you to the point where all that stuff you just heard is all in favor of this finale where you go, ah, oh, that's how the story ends. Or story now, is. I, 
I'd like to point out how long it took to describe just a knife disappearing. And I would like to point out that that is why these are very long. And it's not just because it's just a bunch of plot synopsis. Because that's not what we've been doing for the past 10 minutes. You get it now? I mean, this is the thing. There's people out there who like these kinds of conversations because it feels like they uh, approach the relevant things in the conversation versus the knife is missing. That doesn't mean the movie's made worse for it. Moving on, next point. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Define all those terms and explain your point. And it's like, no, that would, that would make my video long. Like, oh, watch oh. Melt Steel Rays. Watch JJ introduce weapon disintegration as a force power in episode <laughs> 9. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? Star Wars is dead at this point anyway. <laughs> Nothing makes any fucking sense anymore, so... Go for it. ...which is subjective. This conflation no. leads to Mahler nope. routinely implying that if you disagree with his qualitative assessment of a film, then you are denying the facts that he used to come to his conclusions. Well, you'd have to be by definition, which is something you can do, you just have to have actual counters instead of just, I don't feel that they're accurate. And I, I would say it would depend if you account if you were denying the facts or not. You know, <laughs> if I'm like fact one, two, three, four, and five, force the conclusion of A. If you disagree with the conclusion of A, then that means you're denying fact one, two, three, four, or five. Now that doesn't mean that those things are uh, impossible to deny. There are things that have been considered facts that are not facts, and then go back to being facts in life itself, such as Pluto being a particular thing, and then not a particular thing. It can happen. Um, I thought, with all the information we had available, that C-3PO's arm was changed between movies. But then I was given more information, and I was like, that was incorrect. Interestingly, it was still an objective assessment, because I have no emotional investment in whether or not his arm is red. It was just the information I had at the time, which was incomplete information. That's always been what uh, my argument about this is, is uh, approach. It doesn't mean I make an objective statement, that means it's definitively true. Um, it can be. It also... Could not be. It just depends on the references and how incom uh, complete the information is. Also, a really quick comment. Um, B. A. Charles in the chat said, and this made me giggle. He said, "Investigate knife eleven. Knife eleven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. Which could not be further from the truth. In, in fact, like uh, two people can like completely agree on what's in a film and what's shown, and disagree on its quality. In sh my argument would just be that. I agree with that, and I'd call it the subjective aspect, where how much it bothers you is what we talk about. Well, we're talking about the term quality. That's an extremely, extremely nebulous term compared to various My other terms. My qualification of the word quality in this scenario would be the degree to which a standard was achieved. And that could be the standard of the craft in question, or by how much you were satisfied. They would be the objective versus subjective. Um, I wanted to ask. So, Eric Taxon, uh, are they? How do they identify male, female? I don't know. Intersex? Do we know? Okay, I just, I, I'm gonna go with they because I don't want them to uh, prop me up and use me as an excuse that we're a bunch of alt right uh, bigots. But uh, is have we figured out why Eric took off their shirt? No. Is that just it's, like random? I, I've seen like, the video. So I... Eric tax on. Now he's Eric tax off. Ha -ha. I'm sorry about that. Ha ha. I'm, but I'm genuinely sorry. <laughs> but Mark said Eric's facts wrong. <laughs> it could be a, an, ar an argument technique to distract us for uh, not listening to what the hell he's talking about. He's like, oh, I'm hypnotized. Hey, Those kids you are worse. wonderful. You're gonna what need all you... the tricks you can get, man. Just what makes you feel worse is that I thought of that joke three hours ago and I've been waiting since then to make it. <laughs> it's primed in the canon. Short, uh, your standards for objective assessment are not separate from your subjective opinions. They're... Um, I wish I could agree with you, Eric, but like, when I really, when I say I'm not bothered by a thing to my friends when they've raised an objective issue, they'll be like, but you accept it exists, right? And I'll be like, yeah, but I don't know, it just doesn't bother me really. <laughs> yeah, and you know what it is. It's it's just, it's like so. There's a bit of cognitive dissonance, right? And it's like, yeah, it kind of is. Kind of is. Sometimes well, you're like, why do I like that when I've just identified as bad? It's like, well, you can explore why you may feel something more than the average person. Exactly. Some some plot holes are bigger than others, and some of them don't have much weight. So mm -hmm. you can see that, and that's when you start arguing things like, well, the the positives outweigh the negatives, and that that's true. Some movies are like that. They are not perfect but they don't detract from the overall experience. Mm -hmm. But you don't just suddenly 
put these these holes into a little box and say they don't matter anymore. Of course they matter. It depends on how many there are and how big they are. And you can't deny that they didn't happen if they did, you know? Yeah. Just more opinions. So, no, Mahler doesn't think his opinions are objective. He just... If Eric identifies as female, does that mean that we have to censor their nipples? I've censored it anyway, so we're all good. <laughs> That's yeah, true. Oh, that's fair enough. Also, yeah. someone in chat made a really good point. This music is very eerie with this footage. It kind of oh reminds my god, me of like I'm some, so like glad some, I'm not the only one who thought it's that. The, it's it's like some Silence of the Lambs shit right now. <laughs> I could actually totally oh see god. that evolving into like a horror scene. It's like, uh, Please sorry, don't give me ideas. Mola, tomorrow you're gonna wake up in a room. You're gonna hear that. No. See everyone doing that. <laughs> like completely you are gonna agree on what's down. in a film and what's shown and disagree on its quality. In short, uh, your standards for objective assessment are not separate from your subjective opinions. They're just more opinions. So, no, oh my God. Mahler doesn't think his opinions are objective. He just thinks his opinions are objective. Bye, Mahler. Hope you have a good day. What the fuck? This I mean, that was nice of him to say at the end, though, right? Yeah. You know. Why is Movie Bob on here? Uh, it's, it would have been a clip in my video, and he's just playing my video randomly in the background, I think. Oh. I think that's... No, there's there's watermarks all over that mother. Because <laughs> Movie Bob's, like, hideously ugly Help editing. Help me! <laughs> Bye, Mahler. Hope you have a good day. What the fuck? This new Force Awakens video, as it goes, has... By, by the way, Eric, if you are watching this, I want to make it clear that I actually think... I actually quite like you. I think you're nice. I think he's nice yeah, too. So I disagree with you, but I think you're a nice guy, and I didn't mean any offense to you if I have like made a joke about you. <laughs> I hope that I I just want you to feel that I do not have anything against you, and I want to make that clear. There you Wholesome. Go. Now, please. Yeah, I just don't like Jack. That's really the only person I don't like here, but not like a deep hatred. Just like a God, you're so annoying, and you think you're so right. But yeah, Eric. Uh, Eric seems pretty um, civil. And I mean, I mean, they're they're wrong about nearly everything that they're saying, and their arguments are completely simplistic and just sort of like they don't really come up with any sort of real counter argument, like any real solution to it. They just look at you and go, you know, long man bad. But yeah, he's essentially saying that objectivity does not exist. You're like, oh, I, I feel like just every fucking video responding to Mueller at this point is just ad nauseum the same shit over and over. It's like, oh yeah, you think you're right and you think you're objective. You're not. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk, dude. Great fucking conversation. We really opened a lot of eyes here. Hi, I hear you. I Jack, hear I just you. want to say if you're watching this and you took offense at anything I said, grow up. Whoa. Um, <laughs> that's fair. You're, Jay, get pretty the, annoying. Well, what's, um, what's that about Jay? Why'd you, I don't why'd you prefer this one hard or the other? Hard in on people, but Jack, you've kind of annoyed me. I'm sorry. I, I only have so much goodwill. Yeah, like, honestly, Jack, if you just took the arguments that Mahler made and said, I don't agree with this, I don't think this is correct, you would have been much better off in instead of just fucking, oh, yeah, <laughs> you must not like women. <laughs> like, that weakened your argument substantially, and it made you just look like a cunt. And I, I would advise, next time, if you don't do that, I think people will be a lot more fair on you, but also, you're not funny. I should just pepper that in. Like, it's not, it doesn't, the wow. zooms don't make you funnier. He objective okay <laughs> i don't i don't think he's funny he's just condescending and uh uptight and uh, humorless and smug i would just go with the standards um i'd probably find his jokes and delivery a bit funnier if they were more accurate um a lot if of comedy fall relies back on, on being zoom every time to carry the weight of the joke because the yeah, zoom it's of... like I, I i do that in my videos when i'm too lazy to edit something funny on screen i just zoom in a little bit and then most people go <laughs> that was a good joke <laughs> Well, same. So yeah, I, no, it's, it's, it's something that a lot of creators do. I, I would. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's a lazy solution. <laughs> I'm yeah, not it's saying it's a lazy the worst. solution to funnier. keep like. It's a lazy solution to keep the um, people from like getting you know tunnel vision. Also, you know, making the footage spin or making it like rotate in hue really quickly. I like both of those as well. Yeah, there's the, no actual jokes yeah. in my videos. There's just things there to make you think there are jokes. I've literally never made a joke. Of I was looking at my, my mentions on, on Discord, there's one left, and I just found it. It says, thanks for the stream and the unbelievable stamina to endure the bollocks. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the bollocks are subjective. You're like a horse. Implied. 
All right, let's draw it back a little bit. And we can do it. Policies we have spoken about here and more. Despite the fact that the man has now spoken for an accumulated 30 plus hours about how much he did. Long man bad. Dislikes the new Star Wars Oh, you hate things. For his podcast. Yeah, and this is weird as well. Like, I've, we've addressed this before, but nobody seems to give a shit when they make this argument. Um, when I'm talking about Star Wars, if you just frame it that way, it's like, wow, you're obsessed with Star Wars. And I'll be like, oh, so when we're talking about, like, the ideas of a consistent narrative and how it can affect stakes you can label that as talking about star wars and it's like i'm kind of talking about writing really and they're like no you're talking about star wars though it's like okay also uh bouncy ball studio said jack is on his twitter right now trying to quote unquote parody mauler he's basically pulling off a quinton i mean quinton I really want to see this. it didn't go well for quinton so <laughs> good luck my friend <laughs> we'll see how that turns out which I mean, the first hour is just more talking about Twitter arguments he had. I simply don't agree. See what I mean? Like, have you guys seen the video? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the there's first so much hour, more than that. first hour is Twitter arguments. Like, Jack, yeah, you so know this is disingenuous. Yeah, you went over like Twitter. I would say for like maybe we like five minutes. So like, I, I feel so condescending once again. So 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 Jack, uh, the hour is skippable because the hour is is addressing what my issues are with with critics of the current day. Uh, or at least select uh, amounts, and how I'm finding a pattern in how they, they've they achieved... They do a thing, and they make some errors, and all of these errors can actually be sort of shoved into the same category. The idea is it's a setup in the first hour where I uh, display them all separately, and then uh, I think it's 20 minutes near the finale where I imply how all of them are, are falling into the trap of um, generating subjective references based on whatever bias they hold. And I know that you could be like, that's what you're doing. And I'm like, okay, but you've got to prove it. You can't just take me out of context and then say I'm a long man bad. It's like, it's, it's not enough. Um, so, so like, uh, inserting politics into your position. Uh, taking a position you don't actually hold that'll get you views because other people have been saying it. Like, the, this is, it, it wouldn't be objective because you've, you've just got nothing to support it. It's just a statement. Um, that was, that's down with thrust. There's, there's a whole bunch of them. And so the Twitter argument... Is H Bomber guy saying that yes, I've proven that there are bad hitboxes in Dark Souls 2, as in the, the hitbox does not match the model, and then he goes on to say that that's not an objective flaw. And so it's just like, what? Huh? How, how does? <laughs> and also the uh, the irony of him talking about how you would, you put Twitter criticisms and arguments in your video like that's inherently pathetic and then him refusing to directly debate you whether or not you have a certain number of people he doesn't like and then just bitching for like eight fucking hours on twitter and basically just i wouldn't call it subtweeting because obviously everyone knows who he's talking about but it's just it's like dude you can't act like you have better shit to do you're being just as much of a man child as you're accusing Mueller of being mm -hmm. choose one choose yeah. one of them so the, the Twitter thing could only be applied to the H-Bomber guy section, and he likes H-Bomber guys, so that's probably why he picked on it. And that section, I think you can see t tweets on the screen sense. for probably three minutes in total in the first hour. Maybe. I'm trying to be over overestimate, but you know who knows, maybe it's more, but it's uh, the whole hour, Jack, really? The whole hour. Yeah. Okay. Try Presented five minutes. with a three-hour-long critique, which... I mean, the first hour is just more talking about Twitter arguments he had. I simply don't agree with your approach to video game criticism. It's a little immature to write. So, uh, such Jack, an impression, by the way. To explain this to you, like if I was to make a scripted video and then I go, I don't need to respond to Jack's long critique is not deep critique because the entire 53 minutes is just him talking about how I use Twitter. And then I show this small 10 second clip. Yep. That's all I gotta do. And then I've done it. And that's what you've done to me. And you. <laughs> lack like the most basic self-awareness to understand that it's if you've achieved objectivity and i'm out to make you look crazy for it and i'd recommend like chilling out seeing it come out just two days after race of x mass effect andromeda overview a full rundown of the game's development cycle uh, these are not the same thing jack what i was let's, doing let's see how he equivalates this 
<laughs> it's, it's just going to be a long form breakdown of content that's detailed and in in depth versus mine that's not. Let's change the subject criticism. and pretend it's connected. It's a little immature yeah. to write as if you've achieved objectivity, and I'm out to make you look crazy. I love for that it. voice. And I'd recommend like <laughs> chilling out. Seeing it come out just two days after Race of Vix, Mass Effect, Andromeda overview, a full rundown of the game's development cycle, as well as provide key insights into aspects of the game which may have contributed to it being so unpalatable to many players and why, in just under an hour, it's certainly an unfortunate contrast. What do you think my videos are <laughs> if not a, uh, an argument from objectivity where I can, as best I can, for why people find The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens so unpalatable? I find it interesting, his choice of using clips. Like, he says that your entire hour is like, uh, it's a Twitter rant. So, and then in this other video, he shows like a quick time lapse, like a sped up clip of what he's referring to. Now, if that were true about you having like a, just an hour of Twitter arguments, why didn't he speed up like lengthy examples of your Twitter arguments? Yeah, I don't he know, man. Do that. He just chose... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it makes you think. Yeah, but actually listen to what he's saying. He's, he's comparing apples to oranges. It's like, so what? This movie came out two days after this it's other many... guy's video. This movie. <laughs> it's funny that people refer to my work as movies now. It's like it's not wrong. It's funny. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the idea that me and Reitavik are going to have completely different approaches and completely different goals. And so to just be like, he's got a video and I prefer it, it's better. Like, <laughs> sure, man. The players and why, in just under an hour, it's certainly an unfortunate contrast. When you get an hour- yeah, So my opening hour is not about why The Force Awakens is unpalatable. So comparing it to Race of X makes no sense. No. Hour and a half into this critique and almost nothing has actually been said about Star Wars The Force Awakens. You know, there might be a problem. So Jack, again, sorry about this, but it's just, it's like your biggest blind spot. I, I put a skip function at the beginning and I explain what's going to be in the intro before the intro happens. For people like you who don't want to listen to it. What else do you want me to do outside of separate it, which I ended up doing? Make shorter videos, you fuck. <laughs> Longman bad. Don't worry, though. This is only the intro, so it doesn't matter that we spend a whopping hour with Mula just kind well, of... Well, if the entire project is, is 15, 16 hours and one hour is the introduction, that means it would be 7% of the project was introduction. That's reasonable, isn't it? In terms of a ratio? No, fuck you, it's long. <laughs> you're, you're describing, I, um, like, so many more things than, you know. Yeah, I know, it's, it's complicated. To refer to it as an introduction, which is what I do, uh, doesn't exactly encompass exactly what's in there, but, I mean, why am I even trying to explain this to Jack at this point? Of ranting about disagreements he had about... Yeah, it has nothing to do with me trying to discern how uh, reviewers and critics are using a conflation of objective... Uh, argumentation and subjective argumentation to yeah. uh, prove points and then hide away from criticism of them. That wasn't the focus of it at all and it wasn't intrinsically designed to spike all of these different ways they do it and then conclude on that. Whatever. People thinking he's too pushy with his personal opinions on movies. Regardless of how they feel, regardless of how Mark feels, regardless of how the world feels, I feel like it was a terrible decision from a man who had a fan story to tell and no one could convince him of anything different because he had the final word on the script. I'm incidentally going to- So we're dealing again with another clip where he's played it and we're supposed to interpret what he's trying to say. I think that clip kind of related to the thing he was saying, which- Improvement. Good job. Well done. He's getting better. My he's take- learning. I thought that he was trying to imply that my criticism of Ryan Johnson is ironically able to be reflected upon me. The idea that I'm claiming Ryan Johnson went ahead with his ideas despite how awful they were, sort of, and almost as if that's what I did with my videos, I couldn't see how awful they were. You know, is that, do you reckon, could be it? I would say that's probably what he's going, I, I think, I would say there's definitely an argument for that being what he's going for, but he doesn't really make Yeah, so, um, and if that's the case, be... like, Jack, you've... you've Good for you, man. I'll reflect the argument on you too. Wait, so now he's he's reflecting. He's saying that your arguments can be reflected on him, while all of his reflect uh, arguments. No, he's saying that your arguments can be reflected back on you, while all of his arguments can be reflected back on him. Which means you can reflect that argument back on him, which is like three layers of irony.
Inflexception, I think is the word you're looking for. Inflex... <laughs> you nailed it. Different because he had the final word on the script. I'm incidentally going to ignore the argument that I can't make these points because it's only part one of a... Why not? You've ignored literally every, every other <laughs> fucking argument. <laughs> no, he's trying. He's trying now, to be fair. Fucking 46 minutes in. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I realize yeah, we'll now I've not been fair whatsoever, so <laughs> maybe you know, I can change By that. By the way, can I just say, I wouldn't be surprised if some of this stems from the fact that Mahler has a really great voice and this guy's just kind of whiny and doesn't know how to properly, like, rig a microphone. Wow. That's a nitpick. That's an yeah. ad hominem. That's a, that's a long Jack, man bad. Jack, if you need help with your microphone, with, like, soundproofing and, you know, getting, like, a good mixer set up, let me know, because it just sounds like you're talking into a camcorder. I think we can make some decided improvements. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be able to comment. I've literally been using a Yeti for two I years know. now. So Get the I mean, fuck out of my face with that Yeti <laughs> bullshit. I've just know. replaced it. You're now hearing me through a... I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's not the thing you drive on, it's a, a mic. I might uh, hit you up on that later. It's the same mic Sargon uses. <laughs> Frog, Frogbot said Baller's voice speaks for itself. <laughs> it really I, I guess it does. <laughs> Because it's only part one of a series. Mauler himself argues that doing so is like sending back the whole meal because you don't like the potatoes. Uh, so, okay, so we're going to address the, f the thing on screen first. Um, so, yeah. so he's saying, like, Mauler's position is, and he did this at the beginning, if you don't look at the entire project, you cannot criticize project. Um, not a position I've ever held. It's always been that Mauler you himself... criticize, you, you've accounted for what is relevant. <coughs> Uh, which he's fucking adept at not doing. It's almost like he's baited this EFAP because you just put that on here like, <laughs> Yeah, Mahler, I know you're going to do an EFAP, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> I've outplayed you. I've predicted what you're going to do. He's it got, just comes off really defensive. He's got clarification. Mind, so EFAP, yes. he's clarifying my position now when earlier in the video he left it blatant. So again, just mischaracterization. He's actually comfortable with it in this scenario. Uh, Mahler is actually fine with critiquing part one as long as you've seen the whole thing, not just only some of it. Keep that in mind, EFAB fans. That's not even my position. You can critique part one if you've seen half of it. It just depends on what you're doing exactly. Um, so if you said, like, all of part one is terrible because of this thing in part one halfway through, and then I'd be like, why does that make the entire thing terrible? It's like, I, I don't know, it's just, it's really bad. Um, why do I, do they, and I'm just like, couldn't you reference a few more things? And then it's like, well, I just, I haven't seen all of it yet, so I don't know. There's probably bad things in there. I should be like, that's that's not good enough, man. <laughs> like, what, what do you want to do with that? Um, I don't know, man. I skipped the potatoes. What do you want? Yeah, and so he references an analogy, and I'll have to give context again. This is becoming a, a, the strongest pattern ever on EFAB for this particular video. Um, so someone complains that they watched 10 minutes of part one of my series on H. Bomber Guy. And they said that they can determine the entire thing is awful. And then I was like, that's retarded. Makes no sense. Good luck with that. And then H Bomber guy stepped in and said, um, so if you begin tasting a meal and it's terrible, you're not allowed to say, I don't want to finish the meal. And then I was like, if you taste a potato and then you say, excuse me, chef, everything you've cooked is terrible. And then you'll be like, you haven't even tried anything beyond the potato. It's like, it just wouldn't be valid. And that's what's happening with these. And so he's about to correct the uh, the analogy. So that's the context of it, and this is his take on it. Wolf argues that doing so is like sending back the whole meal because you don't like the potatoes. And Food this is abs only in that looking at the way the cook serves up one portion is a good indicator of how they'll serve the rest. Will I turn away the... Uh, so his counter would be that by tasting the potato, you now realize how the cook may or may not have cooked the rest of the meal, and you can make a judgment based on that. And I would be like, yeah, but that would be an assumption. Not anything substantive. You just said, I assume by this that you do this. Yeah. That's not enough. If I was literally just talking about food, I'd say you could tell probably that the meal is going to be shit if they took it. But... Okay, now. And... I don't understand yeah, what the hell you're saying. <laughs> no, that was satire. I, I was only catching satirical reasons. Uh huh. You got yeah, me. And when you, you ask. Get it, Mahler. And then when you ask, okay, what's wrong with the potatoes? I'd like to fix this. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know. Who cares? It's bad. It's Whole not thing's a potato, bad. that's bad. why. And you're like, but it's a literal potato. It's not a potato. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. I'm never coming back the here. The potato that's disappeared when the potatoes are today. Your view of this food is subjective, Muller. Oh, man. <laughs> Your potatoes are too long. <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> Sir, that's a baguette. The whole meal? <laughs> Probably not. I like to give things chances. That's why, aside from finishing the Dark Souls 2 critique, I've made my way through most of what Mula has made. Thank you. Only skipping breakdowns here where I feel like I... This potato is moldy. Yeah, but can you explain why that makes the potato bad? Objectively... <laughs> It's subjective, you just don't and like so mold. so the guy says, ah, well, your name shall be Han Solo. You so he thinks the point I'm making when uh, Han Solo gets provided his name so arbitrarily and clunkily is that uh, it's unnecessary exposition. Like, that's no. the only issue. Uh, you I could have know. unnecessary exposition for how Han got his name, and you, you, what you do is you have his parents holding him as a baby, and then they go, his name will be... Han Solo. That makes complete sense, but man, that would be unnecessary. We'd just be like, okay, we we get that. That's not the only issue with this scene. Did anyone here love how Han got his name? <laughs> I thought it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... I, I, real, I realize that after hearing your comments on it, I'm probably going to have a lower opinion. What, what, what are your, uh, what are your, what, what, what are your people? I don't, I don't have any people. Oh. Han Solo it is. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Um, I don't think the exposition, the problem is being unnecessary. I think the exposition is, is a poor attempt at giving him a name. And it's silly enough to, to even have this scene in the first place. Okay, yeah. your name is uh, Han uh, Loner. Han Individual. It's not Han as catchy, no sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hando Maze. You heard it right, folks. Han's name comes from some random officer deciding it sounded neat. We didn't even need an origin scene for his fucking name. Also, I find it amusing that you're an origin film, but you couldn't be fucked to explain how Han Solo can speak Wookiee in the first place. So, um, the second comment is more addressing the fact that this is supposed to be where Han started, and he starts as a good pilot. He starts being able to speak Wookiee. He starts being great with a pistol. It's like, what the hell? What is the point of this if you're just going to skip all the things that make him individually special? Like, yeah. fine, I guess. Um, but, um, yeah, I just find it amusing that he can just speak Wookiee. It's like, why, though? If <laughs> if we'd never seen the OT and you watch Solo, you might be like, can he just speak? Can everyone speak all alien languages? Is that a thing? And then you watch the OT and you're like, no one else can speak Wookiee. Yeah, and um, they don't even have to really exposit it. I mean, while where he's working, there's maybe there's like Wookies there. I don't know. And yeah, that would, like, that would just, be perfect, pretty much. Just, just uh, that's that's all that it has to do. Maybe have a couple Wookies passing by, and then at that point, we could just gleam. Yeah, he must have learned how to communicate with these. these yeah, like Wookies at some I wouldn't point. just have the one because we'd probably be like, oh, that's funny. Like he says, "Hey, Frank," and just Wookie goes, "Oof," and we're like, "Oh, that's just that he can speak Wookie." Okay. What yeah, if? And that's it. Was, yeah. I mean, that's still say. more consistent than what they did. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, and Jack has taken those two clips as me saying unnecessary exposition is bad and no exposition is bad, which aren't even conflicting statements. No. But he thinks they are, and it's he's like... He's just desperate for contradictions at this point, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, he's, he's... He's like, I have to tie this together somehow. He's created a straw man, and he was defeated by his own straw man in this case. <laughs> Like, that's really embarrassing. Fucking name. <laughs> also, I find it amusing that you're an origin film, but you couldn't be fucked to explain how Han Solo can speak Wookiee. I guess he's defined them both as unnecessary uh, exposition, but that wasn't my points in the clips he's showing, so nice try. Nope. In the first place, standing the whole, like, his counter-argument against the storm man he created is inefficient. Place. Having done so, I'm remarkably unsurprised that Mauler still doesn't get why some people disagree with his methodology in particular. I will say the exact same thing back to him. People. Again, what is your methodology that he's aware of? Long man bad. Long. Is that it? Is just yeah. because his well, quantity is large? Have you heard like in the time that you've been listening to this? Like he keeps have, coming back to it. What is uh, that's a fair question. Ask Jack, what is Mauler's methodology? And you'd be like, like nitpicking. Length, nitpicking for ages. Methodology is not length. It's like that's not that's not what the methodology is. This means you take your time and you explain things, but he doesn't like the explanation because it's not, it doesn't have any depth to it. It doesn't have any meaning to it. You're like, okay, what, which one, which point does not have that depth or meaning? Because the whole point of criticism is depth or, or meaning to find meaning in work. So if he can't see it, like what is he listening to? 
place. Having done so, I'm remarkably unsurprised that Mauler still doesn't get why some people disagree with his methodology in particular, trying to spot contradictions in other people speaking authoritatively about the objective quality. I think I did that though. Is that fucking Phoenix Wright music? Possibly. That is Phoenix Wright music when like sad shit is happening. That's the sad theme from Phoenix Wright 1. Well, he's trying to imply I'm it's so sad confused. that Mauler can't tell how wrong he is. <laughs> I yes. mean, like, hey, good on you, man. I fucking love Phoenix Wright, but couldn't you play, like, the investigation theme? Or, like, the fucking courtroom theme? Like, since you're going for kind of an objection, turnabout gotcha sort of moment? Like, as a Wait, Phoenix Wright this... fan, I'm appalled by your choices here. This is like game with the courtroom, with the anime guy in it. Yeah, you might as well just bring back the scary violin. <laughs> Of media because, he should get shirtless. as Eric points out, Muller confuses a well-founded argument for an objective one. You guys haven't explained what an objective argument is and what a well-founded argument is from your perspective, though. Can well, we... uh, Eric, Eric did at some point, like, you know, understood, you know, what objective meant, but then, you know, fell well, on her face and just said, yeah, oh, that, that term really pissed me off. I'm like, what are you trying to do if you're not defining terms or giving proper examples? It's just... They have these words in their minds and they expect us to understand their heads and they don't give proper explanations and they misconstrue Mahler's points or don't even use them at all. They make, they don't make even points. use them. <laughs> we'll use ones they we don't. can make for you. Yeah. When his critics put out videos saying subjectivity is implied, they're, well, saying that the subjectivity of their views are implied. As if we didn't address this mm -hmm. in that podcast. Did Very you watch explicitly. that or skip that too? Like, Jack, why- it, it's such a weird moment of just, like, subjectivity is implied. We know this because subjectivity is implied. It's like, thanks, man. You nailed it. It's the circular logic that's present in a lot of other things that don't really get far in terms of argumentation. They still make room for disagreements, where Mauler will dedicate hours every week to mocking those who disagree with him and- That's all I do, right, guys? Mock everyone who disagrees with me. Mm -hmm. That's all your content is, right? You just you're just a big meme boy. On the is have we ever like correct me if I'm wrong, but we've never promoted a channel on EFAB. We've never celebrated fan creations on EFAB. We've never covered someone and said they've made good points on EFAB. We've never covered someone on EFAB and said their video as a whole was actually pretty good. These things have never happened. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Never. It's not really for the format. Yeah. No. Because nope, all we do never. is mock people who disagree. That's it. Also, yeah. it's impossible to learn from what you say. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to go with that as oh. my statement. <laughs> that's oh, okay, a statement. Perfect. Yeah, that's yeah statement. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't buy Overload based on uh, a Major Lee's review. Nah, he's a poop face. I was he is a poop face. ...every week to mocking those who disagree with him and front-loading his Frankenstein monster of a critique overview. What is this if not picking a fight? <laughs> <laughs> it's different <laughs> yeah. because he's virtuous, okay? He's virtuous, I'm yeah. not. Yeah. He's I, right. I genuinely think his... Um, his argument for that would be, it's different, I'm right. Well, yeah. If you ask. <laughs> but he's accusing me of being that blind, that's the funny part. It's like, it, whether or not I am Jack, you're doing the same thing. Bring but back Eric, he was so lovely. Eric was lovely. <laughs> this, this man's mean. I way prefer like Eric him, in this video than the wolf one, because the wolf one felt much more like on the offensive, while this one felt more like he was like, this is just how I feel about it, okay? Kind of circling the wagon a bit. For some reason, it, feel, it seems like Eric actually did watch these videos, and then this guy did six like, at all. I don't know what this or guy did. Or he watched did. it just, once and just, and just was like, oh yeah, just took notes, like, <laughs> I don't like that, I don't Frank agree with that. He's yeah, wrong. and then just kind of took Eric's word for well, the rest of it. He just referred to yeah. Eric as a Frankenstein monster, and I'm just like, what do you think that means, Jack? I don't get it. What a Frankenstein boy. monster of a critique overview, picking fights with people. But don't worry, this is only part- Didn't I say I'm open to discuss anything with any of them? And I didn't throw any insults in the TFA video, I just- I, I presented contradictions, that was it. Yeah, they're the one dictating terms to make this happen. <laughs> and then fucking digging their heels in on Twitter for like, nine hours or some shit at this point. Part one of this six-part, fifteen-hour film review- he says that as if it's intrinsically bad. Long oh my god, bad. it's long. Mahler, did you know that this is fucking long? Why is it long? <laughs> Stop being long, long man. Fuck you. L long bad. Jesus That's, Christ. What else can you even draw from this? He thinks it's intrinsically it's, bad. It's self-evident that when you make long content, I don't like it, so stop, you cunt. No, but he's given examples of other people who make good long content.
only bad when Mola makes long content. Oh, right, yeah. It's because Mauler you're on a different political spectrum guns. from him. I feel like that's where a lot of the beef is coming from, is he thinks you're a Nazi. Oh, so he's yeah. just like, I'll take this motherfucker they, down. He wouldn't be the faggot. first person who's made attempts at legitimate arguments at how I'm trying to hide my political perspective in these videos. And you know, when you accuse ER of it, there's a discussion that, that, that a lot of people have, but when you accuse me of it, I'm like, can you even point something in my videos that's political? They'll be like, it's just the fact that you you say logic trumps feelings. <laughs> like uh, You're using facts and logic, and Ben Shapiro <laughs> said it, therefore you're all right. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Get cocked, libtards. Oh. Mm -hmm. You. What are stories but mystery boxes? Right. Oh no. Yeah, we're gonna tackle that, <laughs> but not for about 12 hours. And again- So that line was put in in a redraft because I thought it would be really funny. Yep. I was like, I think I explained this before, but it was like, I wouldn't have known it was 12 hours until I'd completed several drafts because I can actually t give an estimate on what the timing will be. I put it in because yeah. I was like, it's such a bizarre statement to hear, right? To be like, we're going to return to this in 12 hours. You'd be like, what? And it's like, well, that's how long I, this year is going to be. I legitimately, how, how do, Mahler, it's like you have no idea how long yours are going to be because I'll just write out a long script. My video right now is at 18 pages on like uh, why the new seasons of Fully Cooly, the anime, are, are really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And I have no, it could be anywhere from like 25 minutes to like an hour and a half. Like, do you have any way it's, of just My guesstimating? ratio is 5,000 words equals half an hour with the rate I speak. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, the right you speak, yeah. I should series I'm up with some is... sort of algorithm like that. And you probably base it off past work, too, so it's like... Yeah, yeah that's, it's, it's, it's fairly accurate. Good I've got shit. a series I currently only made one part of um, about 10% of the way through the script, and it's about half an hour long so far, so it's going to be fucking immense. <laughs> You're I'm gonna... sorry for ripping you off, Mola. I made you, a long you, you will be long man bad. Mm. No, but when other people do it, it's good. Mm-hmm. Again, none of this gives any greater depth to Mauler's arguments. You haven't argued that. He'll go on a tangent about the Terminator films as an example of how law contradictions can lead to a franchise falling apart, ignoring the fact that the apparently contradictory Terminator 2 is what most people preferred anyway. What? what? I don't Citation think fucking needed. That. What does- so, for clarification for anybody who doesn't know, right, uh... Big fan of the Terminator series, specifically one and two, obviously. Um, you get two introduces a lot of interesting ideas for how this is all going down because it was the idea of desperation in the first one that machines sent one robot back in time. You're like, ooh, and the humans could only send one human back in time. You're just like, that's the rules. Okay, fine. And the second one was like, uh, actually, they could also send a robot, and the good guys could also send a robot too. And you're like, what? Okay. That's strange, and that's outside of a few of the more, more flaws in Terminator, but then, like, that's just the, it's like, okay, that's, that's something. But then everything goes insane in Terminator 3, 4, and 5, especially Genesis. And now he's saying, like, you're ignoring the fact that this is something people like. It's like, I don't, the whole point of my discussion is not about whether or not you like it, it's providing contradictions and breaking the world, which he actually said... He was like, Maul is trying to explain why the world inconsistencies or logical inconsistencies can, can, can break the world building. But he ignores the fact that some people can like it. I'm like, that would be subjective. I'm not talking about that. Yeah, and I don't think who you the ever fuck actually says said that, that, that by the way. Too bad. Who says that? The, they love the continuity breaks specifically. <laughs> it's like, that's the part of Terminator they love. I'd be like, okay. I, I can almost guarantee a lot of people just completely glossed over it or didn't even really think about it at that point. Nobody ever talks about that, you know? Well, uh, when I watched this with Glib for the first time, I was like, "Does this? do you get the impression at this point in the video where he's just running on fumes? He's like, oh, fuck, he talks about Terminator, it says bad, people like it though, so he's wrong. At this point, my criticisms it. are self-evident. <laughs> yeah, just, just think about it. If you just did a, a videos that were like 10 minutes long, just pointing out every flaw, would that make any difference to this man's opinion? Oh, it's, it's no, too short. not at all. He's, he's really stuck in his way. Like, it does not matter what you say at this point. We've already covered the fact that you've been critical of H-Bomber Guy, and he apparently is uh, allied, so to speak, with H-Bomber Guy. Like, you know, he's listening to everything that you're saying, and then on Twitter, he's just making an immense amount of bad faith arguments misrepresenting you. And he, th he doesn't think he's misrepresenting you, but he just is cherry picking and nitpicking every single thing you say and responding to it in the just the most cynical way possible. I don't think there's a single way to change this man's mind. This is another argument as well that you could literally make straight back at him because it's like, uh, what's, he, what's he saying? Fuck. Uh, he's saying that, oh, yeah, well, he points out problems in it. But he, uh, while also in this same video, trying to point out problems with Waller's content, 
and they're naturally saying that the people who like it have confused it for good content. So you you can do that, but other people can't. See what you mean, yeah. The he he's saying that I'm accusing Timonet of being bad despite people liking it, and it's like, aren't you accusing my content of being bad despite people liking it? And he's like, yes, but they're fooled into it, while the people who like Terminator are just legit. Like, oh. Their opinions are wrong, but these people's opinions are wrong. He's just falling into his own trappings. Most people preferred anyway, ignoring the fact that the later entries had myriad aspects people disliked, which had nothing to do with breaking canon. Um, I didn't argue against that. I never said that the only thing people didn't like about Terminator Genesis was breaking canon. So your point doesn't contradict anything I said. Yeah, you didn't even really go that much into Genesis because you were going to make a separate video anyway, so... Yeah, that movie is a fucking nightmare. Like, <laughs> I watched it, too. <laughs> I, I just saw it, and I was like, this doesn't look good. <laughs> As a huge Terminator 1 and 2 fan, it's like watching someone die in the cinema. <laughs> they literally <laughs> erased Terminator 1, 2, 3, and 4 in that movie. I'm excited to hear your uh, thoughts on it. It'll be a fun video when I get around to it. It's <laughs> all just in the mix, and... Each individual point is lost in this murk of... Well, apparently you what? picked up a lot of the individual points. Bring out the air quotes. He likes Bust his air out quotes. those fucking air quotes. Objective he critique. uses them a lot. Why do stormtroopers have laser versions of medieval weaponry available? I don't know how more will take. Yeah, that's, that's the thing yes, I said. Yes, you fucking do! You're just being yeah. a bitch. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear that bit. Troopers have <laughs> laser versions of medieval I genuinely weaponry. don't believe that he does know. I, I genuinely believe that the You keep cutting out. Why are you cutting out? <laughs> yeah, you, go on, like, you, you should use a push to talk. I think maybe you, the uh, sensor is It might be, yeah. Maybe my microphone knows better. Discord's been glitching out on my microphone lately as well. Push it to so my face. Like that. Yeah, do that or push to talk. I think you're just... You Get up know, real close just... to it, Jay. Get up real close. <laughs> oh, Hello. yeah, baby. Hello. Now, now make that point, baby. Do it. Tell us your thoughts, my friend. Oh, so I, I will fully believe that he actually didn't know how you were going to take this. I I believe that's something he didn't. Well, one of the problems for him is that he thinks I haven't heard all this before. Mm -hmm. um, at one point yeah. he says something, I think Eric says that Maul has heard this argument before, so they're aware that I've heard some of this, but I don't know why Jack thought that this was such a hot take on my content when so much of it relies on not seeing my content. It's just, like, inherently contradictive. But then again, contradictions aren't a thing for these guys, I don't know. It's entirely possible if I wanted to take the Jack approach and just be really cynical, I could just say that he did this for views. Uh, or maybe to, you know, quote-unquote, as the term goes, virtue signal to his friends that you've apparently blasphemed. Apparently there is uh, a know. view market in criticizing me or Wolf Seems or Rags, which is really sad if that's true. Cause I think it's true. Clearly. At one point, I wanted to make the argument against him on Twitter, like, oh, yeah, I mean, why make your own positive videos praising stuff when you could just, like, take down other people or other ideas? And then I, I remembered, I was like, oh, fuck, Molly does that. That argument does not hold water at all. I mean, yeah, I would argue against that. <laughs> but, it's, 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 <laughs> but it's, you know, the, 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 the amendment I would make is that he's doing it dishonestly, but obviously he would probably accuse yes. me of the same thing. It's just that his arguments wouldn't hold any water while mine would. Extremely dishonestly, yes. And it, it, is. it sounds so vain when you say it out loud. It's like, well, what do you think the last seven hours was? Like, it's, it's literally us <laughs> lining it all up for him. This couldn't be any more yeah. straightforward. You'll just be like, yeah, it was too long, though. It's like, okay. If his script was better, EFAB wouldn't need to exist. <laughs> there you go. This was a lesson for you, Jack. Weaponry available. <laughs> I don't know how we help will you. take this video, whether it might spark introspection as to whether he feels he's most effectively putting his points across with this increasingly bloated format. Or if he'll double down, insist I'm trying to police him by offering my own perspective. I like that he implies doubling down, like like I I just ignore him and just keep going. It's like, but you haven't really addressed anything of mine yet. I can't double down because there's nothing... He'll, he'll either agree with me and make positive changes to his content, <laughs> or he won't and he'll be a stubborn fuck. He'll agree I'm right on everything, the, the or options. he'll be an asshole. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. First of all, Jack, when you say, when you frame it like that, that implies that anything you said had validity to it or anything could be used to positively impact Mueller's script it did not it was just you taking little snips here and there yeah and we're yeah, about you... to hit a rapid fire uh hits against my character 
that is pro possibly the worst part of his video, but we'll have to take it nice and slowly, because I know that he thinks that he's just being honest, but there's so much context to each of these that we'll happily go through. Is he yeah, about to has not had a <laughs> Oh, give me a sec. Him ...by offering my own perspective. Muller has not had a great history with those he disagrees with, uh, even going back to his early work picking fights with Mark Brown for criticizing Dead Space. We got that one. Now that's my vivisection on Guidance, which was a series I was gonna do. It was like the topic that spans across video games or movies or media or whatever. Um, I have a lot of issues with Mark Brown's channel in general. I just think that he, he finds a way to say nothing in 10 minutes, um, usually. Uh, but he got a bunch of things wrong with the games he was referencing. And his ideas on how to build a tutorial for me were just they were way too simplistic and they don't apply to what all games would encompass. It's like a it's like a guide on game tutorials, and I was like, this doesn't apply to all games, even slightly. Um, no, Mala, you were picking a fight with him. Just yeah. stop doubling down, dude. So, Jesus Christ. Disagreeing with somebody is picking a fight, therefore Jack is picking a fight, therefore his criticism of me here is just hypocritical, even if it's true. So it's just like, whatever, Jack. Moving on to the next claim. <laughs> He's called Opposing Critics, Massive Faggots. So, um, in my Soma series... What a point. I'm disagreeing dramatically with Joseph Anderson, and um, I start ending counter-arguments with insults because I thought it was funny back then. I didn't realize so many people would take it so seriously as, as like a definitive character judgment on me as um, potential homophobe or just an asshole. Um, so I dropped insults, and you can see that Rags and Wolf still keep them because as far as they're concerned, it's just ridiculous to take it the way that these people do. Um, and I'll defend their right to use them, but I deliberately don't to try and avoid giving them bullets. But as you've seen, they immediately use them the second they get it. It doesn't matter what the context it, is. In, in, in context of the video, you were basically calling him like an annoying... You were yeah. just like, oh, stop. Um, like, in context, it was funny. You were just jabbing him like, oh, grow up. That's how it came off. And so, um, I mean, this is, this is just going to follow me forever, but it's fine with me because I absolutely stand for this. Like, you could call it a policy, I guess, or a political belief or a value I have. But... Um, it doesn't matter what the insult is, it matters the context it was delivered. Um, and so, yeah, I call him a massive faggot, which, by the way, there is no context I've ever heard someone seriously refer to somebody as a derogatory manner to be, like, an aggressive homophobe. You're a massive faggot. That, to me, yeah. just, like, it's just, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's it's me. called having a sense of humor on the internet, which is already very edgy and insincere. Like, that's, that's the point. And so next up no, from that, then, um, I also refer to Joseph Anderson as a cabbage soon after or before that, and I show a picture of a cabbage on screen because it's just so dumb as an insult, but it's kind of funny because of how dumb it is. And so <laughs> Turbo Button spoke to me about this specifically. He considers Joseph Anderson a close friend, and he said he didn't appreciate me using a homophobic slur against his friend. And I went over this conversation extensively with him, and the conclusion was he agrees that I have a principle at how insults function and how you should offer somebody the benefit of the doubt in understanding their intention with the word they used. And he said he disagrees with it, and as far as he's concerned, it's more uh, based on how it makes someone feel. And I said to him that that is exactly why I said to Joseph, I'm apologizing for that making you feel the way it did, but I don't apologize for the action, because the action is absolutely justified in essentially what my worldview is, which is I can call you an idiot, I can call you an asshole, the second I call you a word you don't like, I've crossed a line that was imaginary for me, but it was something for you. And so you can't have a consistent principle on that. And one of the examples I gave Turbo Button was um, if the world decided tomorrow that the word toilet is offensive, everybody you know and love gives you an awful look and goes silent whenever you say the word toilet. How long does it take before you stop using that word? Legitimate question. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. As soon as I've realized that they're not joking, and it's not all some <laughs> elaborate prank. And so you realize that it's just based entirely on how offensive someone takes it, and since that differs from per person to person, I'm not interested in that as a principle, it's retarded, so I'm going to go with uh, intention. I think it's much stronger as a principle, and it'll define uh, what a person is intending to do. And so when I said, Joseph, you're a massive faggot, um, he hasn't seen the video or the context, and he tweeted at me saying, Someone once told me you called me a massive faggot, so I'm good. I'm not going to speak to you. <laughs> and I was just like... Yes. It would have right. been interesting if he just came into your, your um, podcast and just said, So, is that true? Just like, ask you himself instead of just, Well, I was told this, so... That's how a lot of people, like, these days well, seem um, to think. It's like, well, I was told you're a racist, so... Sorry, I don't no. want to be associated with that. Don't got to look any further than that. 
Yeah, good it's, well, that's, that's, that's good enough for me. I'm an adult. <laughs> and, and yeah, and um, and so I, I said, I'm sorry that it made you feel that way. And Joseph came, uh, Anderson came back with, I'm glad you've apologized for those actions because they're like inappropriate. I was like, no, no, I don't apologize for the actions. I'm apologizing for how you feel. And so Joseph Anderson's like, so you're not actually apologizing at all. And that's the same position Turbo Button took. And um, I explained it to Turbo Button with a simple analogy, and, and he took it well. I, I can't say for definite if he still maintains that it's a valid analogy, but we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty sure he accepted it. So the idea is um, a health insurance person, a big big old fat dude at 60 comes in, and he's like, I need, it. I need health insurance because I've got to get surgery for a thing. And then they're like, I'm sorry, sir, but you're like, you, know, you breach all of our... Um, requirements to take on um, health insurance. Your insurance would be through the roof if you actually want to buy it, and it, even if th th that were the case, but we're not going to allow it, we're going to deny you. Then he's like, I'm literally going to die, I can't afford the surgery if you do this. And then they will say, I'm sorry, but, you know, th 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 I have to, do this, this is going to have to be done. And so they don't regret yeah. the action, they're sorry for how the person feels as a result. The circumstances, yeah. And once I said that to the two, he was like, okay, I, I get it. And it's like, yeah, and he's like, I don't agree with it in that context. And he said, because the word faggot changes the context. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just like, that's arbitrary. I could I could just say that back to you with any word that I decide is offensive. So, you know, it's just there's this sort of trend I'm noticing. Like, uh, I, I've had I've had conversations with people in the past where the topic will be the N word. And I'll I'll talk about like, you know, or, you know, we'll all be talking about like the origins of it or how it came to be that. But then there's just people there <clears throat> in that conversation that hear you say that word and it just immediately triggers something in them. And they're just like, D -d -d you're not supposed to say that. And it just immediately I feel like that's what faggot has become. It doesn't matter it's, what yeah, context you use it in. As well, long as they hear it, you're a bad person. There's a bit of a, a push back and forth with it. Right. Because one of the intrinsic arguments for it is that um, it's offensive to gay people. But then when you get s large amounts of gay people saying it's not. It's like. Fuck, they're ruining our argument. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well... I, I, got a, I, I got a number of gay friends who say the word faggot. Like, they don't care. They well, say the, it's a funny word. The awkward thing is that Wolf and Rags use it way more than I do on this podcast, and they're both bisexual, so... <laughs> I was I was on that podcast with um, Your Movie Sucks where we talked about the, the Death Note movie, and he and I were both just saying faggot, and, like, I kind of had the faggot card because he's gay. <laughs> he, he didn't really mind. And, and I still yeah, got so... shit in the comments. Like, Turbo Button at one, at one point said something like, um, you know, it's offensive to the group, and then I said, you can't speak for the whole group, and then he said, you can't speak for the whole group either, and I'm like, that's true. So we're at an impasse. <laughs> you can't say yeah. that it's de <laughs> definitively so, I'm offensive I'm gonna go ahead and keep saying it, and you, can, you have the right to be offended, and me not to care. And yeah, so yeah, that's, that's all of that, and that's my take on it. It takes a long time to go through these things, these are complicated, but when you make shitty short videos judging somebody immediately, this, this is what the take you're gonna get with it. Picking fights with Mark Brown for criticizing Dead Space. He's called opposing critics massive faggots, then taken back his apology when it doesn't come with full forgiveness. So his take on it is that I took back my apology because Joseph Anderson didn't give me full forgiveness. It's an interesting narrative. I'm not sure how he generated it, though. Yeah, well, I don't know how he generated most of this. Um, Even Eric has had a full hour of a live stream dedicated to mocking his physical appearance and calling him an autistic retard for disagreeing with one of his friends. So, <laughs> right. So one. I'm sorry. Like this is this is what I mean. It's like, oh my god, man, autistic retard is such a dumb. Th fine, you t you find it offensive. Fine. So number one, uh, the I think it's an hour and ten minutes. We we look into why he hides likes because it's something a lot of people are going to be curious about when looking into his video on Wolf. And so this is his argument. We we responded to the argument. We exposed a lot of contradictions in the argument, and there were several comments about his appearance. Absolutely, um, the narrative here is that we spent one hour mocking his appearance and we laughed as we called him an autistic retard. Um, someone I talked to said they decided to check this out after seeing this in the video, and they couldn't find the direct quote from Rags or Wolf, and not me, uh, calling him an autistic retard, and I was like, really? And it was funny because Wolf was already prepared to defend the fact that he'd used that word, as, as he already had in the <laughs> previous part, and then he was like, I might not have said it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, yeah, um... 
it's uh, it's a playground insult. It's silly. It's just added for flavor, usually for entertainment or because I don't know. You're in the heat of the thing. It's it's um, something that can be pulled back. And yeah, we can apologize if you're offended, but we would advise that you really shouldn't be because it's really not that relevant. Um, uh, but the the way that this is running right now, it, these are all strikes against my character, like one after the other. I pick fights because I can't understand yeah. criticism. I um I encourage the berating and mocking of someone solely for their appearance for hours on end while referring to them as autistic retards. I uh, only apologize to people if they're going to give me what I want, but if they don't, I pull I pull them back. I hate this part of the video. It's very disingenuous, and he's not even giving examples of like the name calling that he mentioned. At least I don't, he hasn't yet. And like I told you, how long does it take for me to explain the scenarios for each of these and how completely fucking different they are from his little passive-aggressive conclusions? <clears throat> yeah. And can I just say... Is, oh, sorry. Um, no, it's cool. I was just gonna say really briefly, uh, for someone to take that and say his chat called him this and they were doing that, first of all, you should never take Twitch or YouTube chat seriously on streams because there's something called kind of like the bystander effect. It doesn't really like tightly apply to this, but generally what it means is when you're surrounded by numbers, you kind of feel anonymous. And that's kind of why everyone gets so ridiculous is because if you make a well-argued reasonable point in a, a stream chat, it's going to be drowned out by everyone going, oh, long man bad. Like it's just the nature of the internet being so ridiculous and hyperbolic and energetic. Uh, people and I think um, I think I was watching a video by the Amazing Atheist or something like a really old video recently where he basically talked about yeah people in, in my comment section say all these offensive things because they know you're going to see it and get really upset about it and that's funny to them like they're trolling you if you really think all the people who are saying this shit 100% stand by it then you're really naive like a lot of it's just for gags yeah like the yeah. fine line between going too far quote unquote and going far enough that you're shocking and funny yeah, a lot of people are just trying to get a list of funny reaction online. It's nothing to take personal umbrage with. Like, I get plenty of shit all the time. I have people calling me a racist and a pedophile and all this other stuff just because other people have said it enough. And I just, you know, you have to ignore it because if you say, hey, guys, look at all these mean bigots online. They're being really mean to me. You're just going to make it worse because they're, they're going, oh, cool. I got a reaction. I got them. Got them. Just yeah, what I exactly. wanted. Just to fucking just ignore them. They will go away. And there's such a small number, too. Like, why do you care? All the people on Twitter that hate me have, like, two followers. <laughs> it's like, okay, I can, I can sleep just fine. Here's the thing. I wouldn't I'd say that he's wrong to find can. That's allowed. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of, like, people who use slurs. I'm like, uh, although my opinions generally go as strong as, I kind of wish he wouldn't do that. Like, that, that's as far as I'll take it. But, yeah. I mean, and for the I record, I'm... People don't like them. I'm against people taking pot shots at, you know, Eric's uh, sexuality or appearance or whatever. I think they, they seem pretty lovely, aside from some of the misinformed points they made. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just people, like, there are going to be people in the real world who think these things and they're really nice to your face. And then they get online where it's anonymous and then, then they get to joke around because they know that's like a taboo subject they can't touch normally. So not all of it is necessarily full of hate and vitriol. It's just because it's like, Haha, I can say it. No one can stop me. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're always, it's all very subjective in that if Jay was like, can you not use the word peanuts around me? If, you, if he's friendly enough with me, I'll just be like, sure, man. Like, I, I don't need to use it, so I'll avoid using it. Um, but if you tell me I cannot use the word peanuts because it is wrong, I'll be like, you're going to have to argue that one. Yeah, you're going to have to tell me why. And if you can't, then uh, you're going to have a problem. So like, uh, again, it's like I use the word peanuts in front of him and he says like, that's really hurt me because of some life experience. I'd be like, I'm sorry that hurt you. And then he'd be like, so you, you regret using the word peanuts now? I'd be like, I mean, <laughs> it's specifically not necessarily like, because it, it was useful to describe the thing I was holding. But I mean, I understand that it made you feel a certain way. So I'm apologizing for that. Peanuts are violence, man. Um, but yes, let's continue. Six massive faggots, then taken back his apology when it doesn't come with full forgiveness. Even Eric has had a full hour of a- Oh, and so after this as well, he says, For its worth, Mauler was the least toxic in this conversation, merely reading out abusive messages from chat and laughing as his friends mocked Eric's appearance, sexuality, and mentality, maybe? Mental- Mental state, yeah. Mental state. Um, so again, about the whole principle thing, uh, I would deliver them myself because I consider them funny and I would expect them in kind, but I know that people use them as bullets. I cannot control 
laughter. And you'd be like, wait, so you find it funny to insult people's appearances? And I'd be like, well, if the joke is good, typically, yeah. I find it shocking. Yeah. If yeah, we're being honest. Enough. And like, I've, I've laughed at my own people making jokes about me. Like, I make jokes about white people, straight people, things Did that I am in. Some jokes are just funny because they're so audacious and you don't expect people to say it out loud. And you say it out loud, you're like, holy shit. Like, the whole Louis C.K. bit about like the Parkland shooting was undeniably shocking and terrible and like clearly from a place of ignorance and just like so incompletely spoken and that's why it was funny because you can either laugh at like ah ha, ha, yeah fuck those parkland kids or you can go oh my god did he really just say that he's gonna get yeah. so much shit like there's shock to it humor is yeah. very multifaceted it's not you don't just laugh if you endorse something you can laugh right. for a lot of different reasons and, and this is or like, like, like someone you endorse wolf and rags making those comments and i'd be like well my moral code would say that they they've responded kindly compared to what's been done to them uh, same for me, as far as I'm concerned with this stream. The amount of shit that's been said about me, and I'm just like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're inconsistent, and you're an asshole. And I said, fuck you, I think. That's probably my biggest collection of insults. And you could be like, that's worse than me taking you out of context and selling you to be something you're not. I'd be like, it's not really. But I mean, we can have that conversation if you want. A live stream dedicated to mocking his physical appearance and I like that you said a live stream dedicated to him, like, as if we we really were like, okay guys, we're gonna make a stream where we only <laughs> say he's ugly over and over again. Hey guys in chat, everyone, let's bully this Eric guy. Like, yeah, that's totally what the like, stream was called. If anybody is watching this video and constantly thinking, like, what liars uh, all these people are on EFAP, go and watch the stream recovery Eric Taxon and have a little timer and start it and stop it every time we make insults and then look at the timer at the end. See how much yeah, and believe it or the not, video is. we're not a bunch of bigots. We're just really open and honest with the things I that am, we're I'm a bigot. And saying. Okay, well, I don't yeah. speak for you, but <laughs> how dare you just assume that about me? Wow, I actually don't like minorities, and they're all subhuman. <gasps> you can take that sound oh. for disagreeing with one of his friends. So, who knows? More than likely, he'll shrug this off because I didn't provide the full context of his work as he did with Eric's last. Desperately. So we provided all the context necessary for Eric's arguments, and you've not provided, like, even a sliver of context for what my arguments are. And calling and out that that's going to be my conclusion does not invalidate my conclusion, Jack. He's going to be upset because I took him straight out of context, and that's well, so dumb of him. It's like, hey, police, you're going to arrest me just because I killed that guy, aren't you? And then they're like, yes, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Got you there. Wow, figures. I just put the cuffs away. They're like, you. you got me. Fuck. <laughs> Mola, if uh, if I say to you one plus one equals three, you're probably gonna say it's actually two, which means you're wrong. I mean, that's, but it's four. Oh shit. Yeah, that sounds exactly. <laughs> now, like now what by that you would logic, say. as long as I've made a criticism of Jack that wasn't the one you predicted, that means it's valid. That's how this works, right? There was a yeah. second there where I just thought, hang on, fucking is it? <laughs> How many ones are in four? Is it two? That's how that's how exhausted I've been by this stream. Really trying to ignore that the first hour of his new video is a highlight reel of the exact tactics he calls disingenuous in others. Yeah, I do call them disingenuous. Uh, this video is a testament to that being mm -hmm. valid as a criticism, I think. Up to and including attacking people's content without playing one piece of audio from said content. I'm not sure who he's referring what? to there. Yeah, I thought like the first time was just a bunch of Twitter stuff that he was... Is it... Yeah. Is it I don't play any audio from Joseph straight. Anderson, but I do show uh, comments from Joseph Anderson. Plus, you've already covered all of this stuff at length in EFAP, so... I mean, yeah, and... you could argue that's not efficient enough to justify it, but I mean, it's, a, it's not intrinsically a wrong thing to do anyway, but I don't even think that that's accurate. Problem is, you did play audio, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know where you're going with that one, Jack, but... I can say that throughout the whole video again, so whatever. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. I guess my aim <laughs> is more on those who might be led to look at the popularity of Mauler's content and say, huh, well, I guess that means I don't even need to consider how I'm discussing a work. I can just vomit out my 20 hour long Space Jam review and then be shocked to the- Dude, go for it. If someone out there wants to make a 20 hour review of Space Jam, just fucking redraft a couple times. Try and avoid repetition. Focus on what you're actually gunning for in terms of the details. Fucking go for it. Make videos yeah. on what you're passionate about. It doesn't matter how long they are. Just get out what you want to get out. Um, but redraft to try and focus down and, and rip things out. Don't listen to people like this. 
who would tell you that like no one can make a video longer than two hours without becoming aimless. It, his evidence for it is all horseshit. Like, it, yeah. just don't let him limit you. <laughs> like, he's the villain in this story. My guess is that if anyone has made it this far in the stream, they're all. That's true. <laughs> From the beginning. Although, if someone is listening and they disagree with us and have disagreed with us this whole time, you're spiked. Well done for making it this far. Leave genuinely. a comment below. <laughs> yeah, actually, by the end also, of the part, two parts, I want someone to comment if they survive both streams. <laughs> super quick, super quick interjection. Someone in chat named Oof Oof said, "Lol J is actually funny this stream." <laughs> <laughs> but also thanks. <laughs> this is like a depressed J Jar Jar picture. I'm thinking of. It's like, mm. <laughs> Discover people often miss large swathes of what I'm saying when I'm told I'm contradicting myself. When critics misunderstand what I'm getting at, I. Imp what even? Sorry, what was that? In reference to? Do that again how I'm discussing a work, I can just vomit out my 20 hour long Space Jam review and then be shocked to discover people often miss large swathes of what I'm saying when I'm told I'm- Okay, Jack, uh, the, I, the fact that people don't like my work does not automatically mean that my work is bad. It's like inevitable. Uh, the fact that I'm making my work to try and oppose the status quo of shorter videos that are made stylish to try and convince you that they've said something when they've said fucking nothing um, means intrinsically that my content is going to be disliked by the people who like that content. So like, the fact that someone dislikes the thing you made does not make it automatically that the, the creator doesn't recognize flaws in it. There's more to it than that. Yeah. I guess that means I don't even need to consider how I'm discussing a work. I can just vomit out my 20 hour long Space Jam review and then be shocked to discover people often miss large swathes of what I'm saying when I'm told I'm contradicting myself, when critics misunderstand what I'm getting at. I implore you to reconsider. This isn't a demand, you can do as you wish, but you, few Dad. people Thanks. engage with material in this way <laughs> and it isn't just because they haven't thought about it. I don't serve you. Yeah, I wouldn't accuse that everybody who dislikes my work hasn't thought about it. I would accuse you of that. You've not only not yes. thought about it, but you've like... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like he uh, said, oh my goodness, this video of Balge is way too long. I'm going to only cherry pick the things I like. I'm going to misconstrue them because I don't have the time and energy to go through every single comment or fact that he came up with. And then I'm going to attack his methodology, whatever the heck that is, and make and a small response. That, at the end, he's going to imply that all you do is vomit out sorry vomit out long content like you don't really put a lot of time and meticulous thought into your work yeah like, it's, just, it's inherently you, insulting you not hear what he seven said I, I phoned redrafts. it in yeah yes. seven redrafts try, is try like vomiting <laughs> yeah well that's the count for them once vomit. i did <laughs> once vomit is, is, is seven times doing... consecutively so you're wrong does it count is if i vomit swallow it vomit back up fight? swallow it vomit it back up swallow it seven times would that still be vomit though <laughs> Good point. Yeah, oh, he's right. Ultimately, sure. Jack is right. That's Makes vomit to the power of seven. Mm -hmm. By the way, yeah. By the way, Jack, you are going to miss something if you keep skipping, which you keep telling people to do. Oh yeah, just saying. They've both encouraged people to just skip parts of my videos. That was just like, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. You pizza the size. At least they've recommended my videos in that way. <laughs> of a dinner table and then insult you for not appreciating oh sorry the this is such a wonderful analogy that makes no fucking sense at all <laughs> what i'm getting skip at. it i implore you to reconsider this isn't a demand you can do as you wish but few people engage with material in this way and it isn't just because they haven't thought about it so his argument there is like few people engage with media this way and it's not because they haven't thought about it and i'm just sitting there like that's fine what what does that have to do with anything like the Someone fact, I can understand Someone the sheer length of the video. Time. Yeah, he's gonna do that now. But um, I can understand <laughs> that people being like the sheer length of your video Easy. is why I won't watch it. I could believe that there could be stuff that's good in there, but I'm not doing it. And I'd be like, okay, that's fine. I don't need a, to understand further than that anyway. But then if someone watches it, like you, Jack, and they're like, there's so many issues with this, and you present it in this video, and I'm like, this isn't even me you're responding to. To reconsider. This isn't a demand, you can do as you wish, but few people engage with material in this way and it isn't just because they haven't thought about it. I don't serve you pizza the size of a dinner table and then insult you for not appreciating the 19th slice.
Did I order the pizza in this analogy? Did I order a table-sized pizza? The, the idea that I'm forcing videos on people and then complaining <laughs> when they don't finish them? I don't... If, if, you're, if your videos are food, then I just have a couple slices and put it in the fridge for later, because they're better yeah, exactly. that way. Yeah, exactly. You don't eat it in one fucking... You don't eat it all in one fucking sitting. <laughs> exactly. In many instances, you have said you can come back to it, there are, are timestamps so you can watch it in chunks. What an awful analogy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't throw out the benefits of clarity and concision in making a point. Yes, you do, Jack. Does mm -hmm. every video need to be 10 minutes long? Absolutely not. And that's why I front-loaded this video with creators who do produce insightful long content that I highly recommend checking out. Honestly, it's up to you. And maybe you'll be the first person to do a day-long review of a fantasy family film without sacrificing the depth or clarity of your arguments. So this is the thing, he thinks no one is capable of it. So at, oh, least, I, at least we have that. Like he, it's he, possible. He, like he's saying that I could be the first one to do it, but the fact that he said no one can do it, it's like, okay. At least we he got seems that. to really speak for a lot of people, like, uh, you know, about people that don't like Terminator 1 as much as 2. Mate, and apparently like as few people he mentioned. His arguments are bulletproof. It's just like citation needed fucking plastered all over this video. To see family film without sacrificing the depth or clarity of your arguments. I don't believe Muller and those who emulate him do. I think instead what we're seeing is a group of people that just generally agree about movies. I wish Rags and Wolf were still here. Me and those two disagree on a lot of takes on movies and we have to talk it out and figure out what we consider to be inconsistent, what things we're disliking or liking. Um, do we forget about the Thor Ragnarok thing? Yeah, me and Wolf really disagree on Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> uh, Wolf said that Interstellar was one of his favorite films, and when I told him it's one of my most hated films, we had a big conversation about it. He watched it again. He said his mind is very much changed on the subject. Uh, this is the process that I think is really valuable, um, bleh, valuable about media, where you sort of watch it with the old brain turned off sort of thing, and then you come away like, yeah, that was kind of fun. And someone goes, you know, I thought it was awful. And then it's your choice to engage in that conversation. And you can be like, I really don't care to argue. I wasn't really passionate about it. I've said this. I said this to YMS when I had a conversation with him. There was a movie that I don't like that he does. And he was like, tell me what you don't like about it. And I was like, honestly, I need to watch it again. And I'm not too passionate about it. So I can't really give you any like uh, strong arguments. So I'd rather just um, tell you that I, I, I don't like it and that... Um, it's, uh, I can't remember why specifically until I watched it again. And that's absolutely yeah. fine. But if I was uh, passionate... I do that with political discussions. People ask me something about, what do you think of the Benghazi thing or whatever? And I'll just go, oh, you know, I don't really know. I'll have to look more into it. I'll have to look more into it because I don't know of this stuff off the top of my head. Yeah. And that's like a fair thing to say. It just means you're reasonable and you don't want to talk out of your ass. And what happens, hopefully, is that, uh... I come home from the cinema and I go, oh my god, the movie Gloompus was really good. And then Wolf is like, well, what about the, the part where the protagonist, Gloompus, uh, tries to shoot somebody and the bullet goes right through them and they, they just go, oh, it didn't work. And it's because he had a wallet in his pocket? Like, how would that stop a bullet? And I go, that doesn't matter because it didn't bother me. Wolf would be like, what the hell? What do you mean it doesn't bother you? And I'm like, it just doesn't bother me. Like, that doesn't happen because we've agreed on standards. Well, I guess I guess I need to go into more depth than that. Um, we understand the standards. Um, may, maybe we don't agree on every one of them, and that's the part where discussion comes in. But it's just like we hold each other accountable to these things. We don't let each other get away with fallacious arguments. It's part of what I think makes the conversations much more, um, I don't know, fruitful than Jack can understand of them. And I know that's a pretty cruel statement, but I mean, I pretty sure I've got the room to say some things about him. <laughs> Just one or two things. Right. Yeah, it's all the limits on your, on your uh, willing suspension of disbelief again, and uh, in the case of The Last Jedi, or the people who like these kinds of videos or who praise the show, yeah, their brains are pretty much turned off. They're enjoying the popcorn, and they're liking the special effects and the music, and that's about it. There's, it's a great, it's a great time, great show. We enjoyed it. Everyone had a good time. There's lots of exciting things blowing up. That sort of experience is what they're going for. So uh, we, we actually say, hey, what what was this uh, light speed ramming thing? What the hell? Why didn't they do that before? And, well, it doesn't and, bother and... me, Smud. Well, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> oh. But I do want to also, clarify, just... the film is great, but that part doesn't bother me, though. 
So can I pull kind of chat the... really quickly? Sorry, can I pull chat really quickly? Smudboy here with the uh, uh, fucking uh, what's I forget what the name of the main character, Commander Shepard. Jesus Christ, uh, Smudboy here with the Commander Shepard avatar. Doesn't he have such a great voice? Can you just listen to that shit for Chase, hours? Chase has a crush. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah during, okay. yeah, during the break, it's like oh, we've Chase, already heard subscribe this. to his <laughs> channel. <laughs> Go check out his videos. I will. He I'm responded. Right he responded right. to Patrick Willems. You gonna uh, you gonna go see Gloopus together and have the uh, bottom cut out of your popcorn bowl? Ooh! <laughs> Spent ten hours with this ginger taking our souls. Please stop. <laughs> getting a hundred percent yes rating from chat. So there you go. We, I think we're actually very close to the end because he has the Patreon outro. I think. Have the same <laughs> nitpicks and through enough circle jerking, have essentially decided. Yeah, we don't discuss stuff. We just circle jerk. I, know, I would actually agree that there is circle jerking, but there isn't a friendship group that doesn't have circle jerking. I don't think it's possible. Yeah. That they are I in interpret that completely literally. Yes. Special club where Call only they know what makes things objectively- Plenty of people know Jack, plenty of people I've never met before, like Wolf did before I met him. So fuck off. ...good or bad. Who can ignore the fundamental flimsy subjectivity of their argumentation? We don't ignore subjectivity, we use it in our videos. It's very important to us what media means to us. We just like to separate it out when we talk about what's actually there, and what's provable, versus what we felt about the things that were there. How many times do I have to explain this? Because, well, they agree with each other, and that gives them the right to push their evaluation of a work as a notch above the rest. For example, Wolf was talking about the grey earlier. Um, subjectively, that movie is through the roof for him, because he associates with a lot of what the messages are in that film. I would probably agree with him. I would probably agree with him on the objective level, but the subjectivity for me is going to be so much lower than his. And I'll just be like, yeah, it doesn't surprise me though, because I, I don't connect to it the way he does, while I will connect with something that he won't. And that's called being yeah. humans, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of that, uh, what's that game? Um, Night in the Woods? Um, a lot of people agree that it's really good, but like a lot of them say that it's a great game because they identify with the characters more than others. And so other people who don't identify with the characters have had less a good time with that one. Mm -hmm. So it's that one's, you know, difficult to measure because you do have to feel like you identify with the characters, which a lot of people don't in that regard. So. To, in fact, seek out those who disagree with that, to... So he shows Eric Taxon when he says we seek out people to disagree with. Uh, Eric made a video on Wolf first. We were responding to it. I don't think that's valid either, but... Like, don't you guys think it's pretty amazing how many of his statements are invalid? Like, I am impressed. You'd think there'd be a ratio a of, bit. like, for every three bad ones, there's one good one. It's like, nah, it's pretty much all of them. I'm... I'm just impressed he keeps doubling down on like look look at this remember that stream I told you about where Mahler and his friends like dedicated the entire stream allegedly to harassing Eric just a reminder that Mahler's a bad person here's the stream again if you didn't catch that Mahler's bad by the way like it just it's so juvenile he has to keep falling back on that yeah. of a work as a notch above the rest to in fact seek out those who disagree with that to act like basic middle oh, shit, school bullies that side, because <laughs> they've decided they're right. The length of the critique doesn't wind up deepening any understanding of the text. Okay. Only to obfuscate yep. the lack thereof. Sure. But hey! So that's his theory. I make my videos long to try and hide the fact that I have nothing to say about the thing. It sounds like he's being, uh, he's really disincentivizing people to make long videos and prove, uh, prove you they can do but it like, better than you. How stupid does he think I am if that is what he truly thinks? Like, I'm like, Man, I have nothing to say about this film. Well, that I'm just going to make my to, video... To, to bullshit that long. I mean, that's, that's a I know, that's thing. what I... It's like, I want to make my videos so many hours long that people won't even notice I'm not saying anything. <laughs> it's like, if you had a friend I mean, who'd give up with that, you'd be like, what is this plan? This is retarded. We can all agree that this long critique is not a deep critique in the slightest. Yes. That's just my opinion, and you're free to <sighs> agree or disagree. In we knew that already, but thank you for the permission, Dad. In the comments below. <laughs> Pick more fitting music, fuck you! <laughs> we did oh, it! too sad! That's the end Where's of the, the video, it's been done. <laughs> Congratulations! How many hours are we at this point? We, uh, that would be, what is that? Seven, I think it was seven hours, twenty minutes, plus nearly two hours. That was awful. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful, I feel dirty.
Try harder, Jack. You can fucking not like Mueller and fairly represent his points. It is not hard. Yeah. Don't skip next time. Chad is blowing up. We did it. I've I've never (laughs) done a stream before where after I feel like I'm definitely going to need to have a lie down. Yeah, I I know. (laughs) I'm I'm probably going to go straight to sleep. I'm actually hungry, but I'm just ignoring it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have nightmares about Jack subtweeting me on Twitter. There's still some (laughs) some stuff we've got to get done, so let's move right on into the... This is the... uh, I've sent... Click that link, everybody in in the thing, and then uh, it'll show what I'm showing on screen, so... Um, oh well, I don't know why we won't just take it in turns, I suppose, if you'd like. So, um, if, uh, if, Jay, do you want to read the first one? This is, um, oh, no, you guys, you guys take it. I'm horrible at reading. Okay. Uh, should we just alternate between... I'm a, vo- I'm a voice actor. I was going to say, we, we can all do it, but I wanted to give everybody one. So we'll start, <laughs> we'll go from the left to the right and, uh, keep going like that. So, that's bullshit. you want to go first? This is Jack's... Qualification for why he was judging my rages with the standards I commit to in the critiques. Certainly. The unbridled videos are identical in their argumentation to the real critiques. One second, let me uh, let me scoot this over to the other window here. All right. It is literally on record numerous times that Mahler has tried to be as objective as possible with the unbridled videos, which are very clearly are not. And he should probably stop saying that if that is not the case, I continue to be shocked that fans of Mahler are now arguing, actually, the series that makes up the overwhelming majority of Mahler's output is supposed to be tedious summary filled with mistakes and poorly argued points. So, um, entertainment value being, lol, that's fucking stupid, moving on to the next thing. Like, (laughs) he takes them and he's like, that's not objective, and I'd be like, you're right. So what what are we talking about? And he's like, well, you I, you said you try to be as objective as possible in those, it's like with the objective points, sure. I could already see the air quotes and him fluttering away with them. <laughs> so yeah, the <laughs> fucking takes what, off like a propeller. <laughs> what he didn't what he didn't grasp from my comment about trying to be objective as possible is that that applies to when I'm being objective versus subjective. It's it's just I know it's confusing, but it's like. I don't need to have... Uh, uh, when I say I couldn't see what was going on in the beginning of Black Panther, I don't need to explain that to you in any further element. Like, so it was dark and I couldn't make out where Black Panther was standing and what he was doing versus where everyone else was and I couldn't tell who was winning the fight or losing. And That's then he's, you'd be like, yeah, but you can if you was like, I- I'm telling you, I couldn't, for fuck's sake. So, um, yeah, uh, it's pretty much an admittance that he just conflates the two and all he ran on was a small quote from a stream that I had with Wolf where I was just talking about how better to be as objective as possible when making objective statements. Simple as that. And even if you'd be like, you didn't say that explicitly, I'd be like, okay, well, that's what I meant. So does that clear this up? And then he's like... And then... This one was... And then when he says it's supposed to be filled with tedious summary and mistakes and poorly argued points, it's like, no, they're saying it's supposed to have... Uh, entertainment value points, as in, I, I rage out and I say this is dumb and I do this, all these things. It's it's entertaining because uh, it's supposed to appeal to how you guys may have felt watching certain movies like Terminator Genesis. A lot of people are very fucking unhappy with that movie and they would have ranted to their friends. And so when they watch me do a video like that, they can empathize. That is what they are for. The critiques. I am very calm. I'm trying to provide all of the evidence. This, they're totally different, but if you ignore that, you should be able to find more arguments of inconsistency. So, congratulations, Jack. I see why you did it. And Jay, are you going to say something? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, but I've completely forgotten it now. Well... It's, it's 6 a.m. almost. <laughs> that's true. Um, uh, so, so okay. my boy, do you want to tackle the next comment? This is from the comment section now, so this is what people are, uh, how people feel about Jack's video on, on me. Oh, sure, okay. The effects will age, the shoots will age, every choice will age. Writing and storytelling is timeless. Talk about no appreciation for film like holy shit. Cinematography is a big part of making a film like it's a visual art. To throw that out and say that it's not very important is really head-scratching to me. Also, effects take a lot of work to pull off. It's to help immerse the audience into a film story and world. Um... So this is in context where I'm saying that uh, writing, these things don't matter to writing when I'm judging writing. And they've extrapolated that I think that um, 
I have no appreciation for visuals or cinematography, even though I have a whole section addressing uh, errors in editing, and I talk about how the film's got really great shots, and there's a lot of things I like about it, so... Unfortunately, you don't get that impression when watching Jack's video, because he's obviously not going to uh, address those things. Yeah, because so. he only quoted you saying, like, you know, graphics and stuff don't matter in the grand scheme of things, and he took away from that that, you know, effects don't matter at all, and which is not what you said, but <laughs> that's what he seemed to glean from it. Oh, that's good. And we've got memes. Oh yeah. Long man back. <laughs> I am I am gonna I like it. and retweet that uh it's, tweet from it's so Jack. funny how instead of showing up on the podcast, yeah. he just spent the entirety of the of he just spent the entirety of it just taking shots. It's like, dude, we could have had a really great conversation. He could have clarified his points. You could have maybe Mahler, if there were actual points somewhere in that mess for you to take from it and like learn from, he could have taught that to you. But instead he's just being a bitch. Yeah. It's like, I would have loved to hear you guys talk, and hopefully you still do, even if it's one-on-one. -on -one. I'd love that. Sniping because maybe maybe he'd have game. interesting shit to say. Yeah. But he's just took long man bad. He's just like, <laughs> I win, I'm right. <laughs> uh, Chase, do you want to read the next one? Uh, me? Yeah, it's, you're next in line, I'm afraid. Oh, sure. You didn't post in chat, though, did you? Yes, everyone has this up, do they not? <laughs> It's a uh, little imager file. Uh, the wow, okay one, or? Yep. Yep. Wow, okay. I absolutely kind of had my brain break when hearing this Mahler guy say that nothing but the writing matters. It's a visual storytelling format. The premier visual... Oh, you fucked it up for a second. The premier visual storytelling format. Not a single element of the acting, the set design, the lighting, the prop work, the camera work, visual effects, sound effects, musical score, and editing matter. Holy shit. That's a nuclear take. How can someone be so reductive about so many aspects of cinema and claim to be just the and claim to just be the deepest thing out there? I think I got the emotion right. You, you skipped, skipped third you line. Skipped a line, but uh, yeah, you skipped a it, line. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the thing of it is, <laughs> at least it was a new sentence. <laughs> yeah, the thing of it is, though, it's the same point that the the guy in number two made. It's frustrating. Oh, um, it's an important line, though. Uh, also, the idea that while all of those may age, writing doesn't. There's nothing about the style or manner of delivery in movies that hasn't changed and aged ever. So that would be the delivery. That's not the story. The mm -hmm. delivery of the story. So if you have, like, a guy going, Hello there, Jane. We are going out for shopping. You'd be like, oof. That's, that's <laughs> some bad acting. <laughs> yeah. And, like, that was the, acting for its time? You know, and you, you, so uh, the story itself, if writing has aged, the arguments usually come in with like, oh, they're using words that aren't accepted anymore. It's like, okay, but that wouldn't change the quality of the story. And you'd be like, okay, what about when they talk about things you wouldn't be aware of now? Like they refer to a te piece of technology that's been out of date for 300 years. I'd be like, again, that doesn't take away from the story because it would then be a period piece, I suppose, you could argue. Like, you, we don't say this about movies that are based in medieval times. They don't work because we don't know what these things are anymore. It's like, that's ridiculous. So, a, a strong story doesn't age. Like, th that's the sense, like it, Try and uh, attack that in any way you want. It's, I, I'm, I would be open to it, but I'm pretty sure that's just definitive at this point. Because any reasons you come up with a story aging are usually not because it's the story's fault. It's usually something else. Like how language changes, or how time changes, or how someone acted the line badly. It's like, that's not the story's fault. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, uh, the whole nothing but writing matters. Like, I never said that, but thank you, Jack, mm -hmm. for these people think I did. Um, so the next one is, if internal consistency is the pinnacle of storytelling, telling a great story is the easiest thing in the world. One day, Willie used the last two slices of bread to make a sandwich, the next day, he went to the store to buy bread because he had previously used up the last two slices. There, I achieved greatness. So, um, yeah, the, this story <sighs> is relatively consistent from what's in it. Um, but being, being objectively consistent, uh, I don't know why you think that I think that means you've achieved greatness. I don't know where you're coming from with this. And, um, let's just say as stories go, there's a lot of ways to break that down that would show its flaws beyond whether or not it's consistent about how much bread you have in those two sentences. Yeah, it's just ridicule. And the thing of it is, it's, all like, it's not greatness every single time consistency is made. It's just 
it's nice when so much consistency is made over a long duration. And it's like, we, we should come to expect that. And the fact that it doesn't happen as often, we see a lot of, in, we see a lot of inconsistencies to keep the plot moving like so often that it's just kind of, it's nice. It's just really nice when lots of consistency happens. And that means we're moving on to the next one. So back to you. Das Wait, uh, hold on, hold on. Real quickly. Um, I've been starving for about three hours, but I, uh, I've been sustaining myself off of the attention from your viewers and you, my beautiful okay. uh, friends, people. Uh, I'm going to go to bed because i got to mm -hmm. wake up in nine hours and I like to get my sleepy sleeps. But uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, I doubt I'll really contribute anything meaningful to this part. So, um, uh, don't sell yourself short, short son. Yeah, I don't like you. I like it when you come on here. Chase is beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you, little my bubby. I'll talk to you boys later. Make sure to do, eat do your vegetables. Do you want to quickly say why people well, should hi, subscribe um... to you? Uh, you should subscribe to me because I'm turning into the anime equivalent of I hate everything. And the uh, video game equivalent as well. <laughs> uh, I don't give fucking anything a pass for the most part. And uh, my microphone was $600. That's all, folks. Hey, I'm really picky about anime, and I, don't, I haven't watched a lot. Maybe I'll tune into your channel. Mm. That's because it's, it's all fucking bad these days. Subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> so, sorry that we fucked up. We're not supposed to promote other channels on here, right? That breaks the narrative. Uh, um, sorry, can I also... Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to leave for good, but I am going to go and have a lie down. <laughs> well, do you want to you you pimp your channel now? So that... In case you're not around when... Um, sure. I started out two years ago by ripping off CinemaSins, then I ripped off uh, Harris Bomber Guy for a while, and now I'm making an in-depth critique that's a rip-off of Mola. If you like <laughs> um, fucking garbage that's been ripped off from other people, subscribe to me. Uh, if you don't, then leave. Hey, sounds good. All there right. we go. How, how did I do? I'm, I'm sure people will get a good impression from fucking that, Fucking right? terrible? I don't know. Like, why would anyone subscribe to you, Jay? Let's be honest here. Uh, it's like morbid curiosity. That's true. So, it's like, you know when you see like a train crashing, it's hard to look away. Can we define your, uh, the genre of your channel as a malls like? Sure. I, I, it's be sins like, like then bomber like, and now malls like. Bomber like. It's the bystander like. effect like. <laughs> um, All right. Um, yeah. I'm off for now. I may show back up if I start feeling a little bit less fried in the head. Okie dokie, dude. So, Thanks for amazing. lasting as long as you did. Thanks. <laughs> um, Never heard those words before. So yeah. <laughs> uh, Dust, Dust Bullshit, do you want to jump onto the one with uh, that begins with six hours? Certainly. All right. Codex Entry says, six hours, 38 minutes, and 52 seconds into my 2001 A Space Odyssey analysis, and then we just randomly cut to these colorful, seizure-inducing hallways. Is Hal making these? Is Dave just tripping on the drugs? The movie never says because there is no explanation. It just wants a nice, pointless visual that now looks dated because Stanley Kubrick only cared about style over substance. So, uh, that's me, if you guys don't get it. Um, it's a really great representation of how I would tackle 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, Joel? <laughs> it's, like, it's like I don't even know. It's like, yeah, there's nothing to draw from that sequence because um, when you see something that doesn't necessarily make sense visually in a, in a realistic manner, that has no concept of, of why it might do that, um, maybe you can ask a question. But I mean, the, the context of the movie would account for... for many interpretations of what is happening in that sequence. This is, this is much like a lot of what people consider to be artsy movies being unexplainable objectively, and it's like, no, as long as there's indications and in interpretations that are based on references, you're fine. But obviously, it's more fun to make fun of me, so whatever. Yeah, but uh, next time you're going to make fun of somebody, you might want to uh, take a page from Jack's book and use some quotes. Yeah. I was, so, um, I was a little confused on what he was going with that I, until you brought it up that he was making funny. He's like, oh, okay, now it makes a bit of sense here. So, uh, well, to be fair, Stanley Kubrick is one of those, especially 2001, is one of those movies. So it's based off whether or not you appreciate cinematography or visuals. So um, some of these comments could be true to some people. So I was going to say, yeah, who, who knows? If they could argue it uh, efficiently, maybe that is the take, but it's just like, I'd have to see it presented and I need to see the movie again, but whatever. Like, it's just fun to make fun. Um, you're, you're up yeah. next, Smud Boy, and this one's, you might want to take it slowly because it's a bit tismy. This is actually rather ironic because this is the, the same quote that I was replying to all, all day today. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe you also replied to it as well. But uh, yeah, this was an interesting person to, to talk to. I don't understand how this lazy anti-intellectual nonsense of theming doesn't matter can somehow pretend like they have the rational logic high ground. Like, have you ever been in any literature and media class past middle school? Like how grammar rules and story structure are often thrown out the window in the service for conveying a beautiful idea. Like, it is. Art? It is. Supposed. To. Give. You. Feelings? And that picking the literal words of the text doesn't even scratch a molecule of the edge of all the meaning contained within. Within? You're trying to go for like a valley girl sort of thing? I uh, don't understand. I don't know. And it's like, like it's it is immediately art? cut off by the fact that it's like, your premise is broken. I think themes totally matter. Where are you coming from with this? And it's like, well, the video said you didn't. It's like, oh. Well. The one that really irks me is the how grammar and rules and story structure are thrown out the window in the service for conveying a beautiful idea. Um who did this? Who has ever done that? I thought that was a good idea. Yeah. It, it's, it's bizarre. Like a beautiful, what, what is a beautiful idea at the expense of grammar? How, how can you understand or see the beautiful idea? At, <laughs> well, this is the thing, right? Bizarre. Every movie submits to some form of logic. They all have to, they all do. We all know this is a thing that every fucking filmmaker has to do. So there's no point trying to argue they don't because progression you don't have a story without progression so they do adhere to it to a degree but it's like there's so many reasons why they'll just stop and it's like for example oh fuck that guy had two knives in the scene with ray can we just airbrush one of them out yeah just do it fuck whatever <laughs> people won't notice <laughs> like, okay. nobody um so the next one is also more not understanding the difference between objective and subjective is the funniest part about him and his buddies parading around YouTube as some enlightened objective thinker. Uh, Mola goes on several minutes about how beauty cannot be objectively explained, yet insists the quality of a movie can. Um, beauty is inherently subjective by its definition. To be satisfied by something's beauty is like... If you want to try and uh, achieve a standard for it, like symmetricality would be one. So people are like, why is someone so attractive? It's like, well, they're very symmetrical. And the reverse is usually true. Why are they unattractive? Their face is unsymmetrical. Like things are falling off in different directions. Um, someone might be like, their eyes are too close together or too far apart. Because it's like, uh, you can try and give some form of standards, but beauty itself, to say something is beautiful... It's pretty difficult to, to say that that could be objective. I don't know, it's, it's like a feeling you're experiencing. But then the quality of a movie, I keep making my standards available, but it's just like, no, nah, it's just, it's just, you can't do that because the movie's feelings only, question mark, subjective only, I, I don't know. And it says, um, of course, he doesn't even acknowledge this discrepancy. It's not a discrepancy. And he doesn't explain exactly how pointing out logical consistency proves the quality of a movie objectively. It's literally just contradicting itself, ruining its stakes and progression. Like, I pretty much said that like four times now. I really want him to watch those three movies along with others, like Inland Empire, Raw, and Killing of a Sacred Deer. His style of criticism barely works on Hollywood blockbusters. <laughs> okay. And it completely <laughs> falls flat against those that don't follow blockbuster format. I'm not sure what they Whoa. think that means. Yeah. Uh, the guy is a joke of a critic and is completely blind to his flaws outside of getting things wrong about a movie while having the nerve to accuse people of the same shit he's doing. Interesting take. Ouch. Yeah. That's... To say you don't look at Hollywood blockbusters, I mean, what, that's the majority of what you've been looking at is the popular titles on your channels. So. Yeah, the idea is that um, I can talk about writing through things like IPs that people have already accepted, but they're only going to be ones that I care about personally as well. Oh. Uh, but there are things I want to talk about that I don't think are in much of the public eye. Like, I don't think The Haunting of Hill House has been watched by many people. Many people are not aware of it, so I kind of want to cover it to give it more exposure and talk about why I think it's so well written. Um, so, you know, the time will come with these things that are less known that I want to cover. I just need more time because it takes a long time to make my stuff. Um, but anyway, next comment. That's bullshit. You ready? Yes. So this one's uh, this one's spicy here. So Mahler is one of the most annoying people on YouTube, especially in the comments of other people's better videos. 
I'm glad someone is finally taking a proper swing at him and his style of, quote, criticism. I'd hate to be someone like him, his contemporaries, or one of his fans who consumes media like this without any thought or artistic purpose or meaning behind a text, even in a blockbuster film, as though people making films don't have thoughts or ideas or opinions they want to express and are just shoving the characters from points to point, point A to point B along the plot. No wonder they don't like anything. If all movies were made this way, <laughs> they would be they would be boring. Imagine not having the emotional self-awareness to analyze why you personally like or dislike something. So you have to resort to pedantic nitpicking to unpack media you dislike and somehow claim objectivity in analyzing art. Also, it's hilarious to see him fumble over his ideas that somehow the visuals in a visual medium don't matter. This again, great. I'm absolutely not saying you need a film degree to analyze film. In fact, I'm glad that the internet allows for more diverse pr perspectives on film. But my advice to Mahler would be to maybe pick up a book sometime. <laughs> and now I, I recommend fuck. picking up some context sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah. So oh, once it, once again, uh, visuals do matter. I never never fucking say they do not matter in general. It's when I'm talking about writing that they're not relevant. It's strange that they they say that visuals matter, but they tell you to pick up a book. Like okay, that's logical. That's, that's <laughs> the book might have pictures. How oh. dare you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we actually covered the why is Mon Mothma wearing a ball gown, and why is Admiral Holdo doing it, so we could skip that one. Sure. So, uh, next one ready, Smud Boy? Alright, if Mahler said something negative about either the original Star Wars trilogy, Lord of the Rings, or Terminator, his channel would be- would die right there and then. Should we- should we He's stop kind of... there, right? So, and you guys are welcome to- to go for this too. Let's start with the Star Wars trilogy. Is there anything wrong with A New Hope? Um... I'd have to rewatch it to figure out the details, but... Um... I need to come up with a singular negative thing about the movie in terms of writing. So if we can just get one... Um, we, we talked we talk before on other streams about how it's really strange that there's just this squid creature inside the, the, the trash compactor. And that it's mainly just there to generate a moment of thinking Luke might have drowned, but then he hasn't, and then it's gone. A bit of a... Um, something that probably could have been a bit a bit more explained and it's there simply to provide like a dramatic moment as if to sort of pad it out because there's nothing else to do there's, there's probably a criticism in there somewhere not that significant but it's something maybe i mean that's um that's a minor detail no that's the thing though right they all they said is i need to say something negative about it oh it doesn't matter how major or minor it is and then i will literally destroy my channel so next up empire strikes back <laughs> Uh, it's retarded that the A-Wings, I think, I can't remember if they're A-Wings, they're probably not A-Wings, the ships in, in Hoth, it's retarded that they don't go out of their hangars and then cycle all the way around to the back of the AT-80s instead of flying right at them because AT-80s take so long to turn and uh, if they did that would actually be beneficial to the, to the Rebels, so their plan of attack is very inefficient compared to how good it could be. That is true, I remember seeing how they blew one up, they just shot it. As, as as after the fact, they started spinning around them with the wire. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's another one. So that's two out of the three. Return of the Jedi. There are so many things that don't make sense about Return of the Jedi in uh, the OT. I would literally just cite the entire plan at the beginning. Yeah, this is the first half. It's so much of it makes no sense at all. Um, I still love the movie, by the way. But yeah, Lord of the Rings. Um, it's bad because I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I, was, I was speaking to Wolf about what he considers to be flaws in Lord of the Rings. One of the ones he said, so I'll, I'll just parrot it here and see what people think. Um, the the elves turning up in the two towers is not in the books, uh, to, to Helm's Deep, I mean. And it, you can tell by there's elements to it that are very clunky in, in, in the movies. One being that the elves are basically erased from existence once that scene is over. Apparently every one of them died. You're just like, okay. Two, that... um. Our characters were expecting the orcs to have arrived at that point, and it's the elves, implying that like the elves could easily have just crossed paths with the orcs at that point. So you're just like, did they not? Did they see them? Did well, that, that seems a bit awkward? But okay, fine. 
Then there's, um, how did the, they know that Rohan was in trouble and that they were at Helm's Deep? Um, these are all things that Wolf has said, by the way, you'd have to, uh, confirm with him, because I wouldn't be able to reference enough, but he said that that could be considered, um, a flaw in, in at least the two towers. I don't know if we need to go through all the Lord of the Rings films. Um, Terminator, uh, what's a flaw in Terminator 1? Oh, geez. Why are they only right, sending one robot back? Why are they only sending one robot back? Easy. Terminator Why does two. the robot have an accent? What is you know, <laughs> all these things? <laughs> Why is it a standardized model instead? When you, as soon as you've released one, uh, yeah. the cover's blown. Arnold mashed several they... buttons on that payphone. How did he even get through to anyone? The fact that they can transport human flesh, but not... Seems pretty contrived. Yeah. So, um, according to this commenter, I've now killed my channel. Sorry, folks, the Check pie's over. <laughs> like, every, yeah. It's just zero viewers, and you guys just leave in disgust, so... Yeah, continue, okay, continue with the quote. We did it. We satisfied okay. this guy's, this guy's if-and-if-then statement. All right. These kind of YouTubers live in breath by validation gangs. They do or say anything that their audience doesn't like. It usually implodes in their face. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Look, for example, when an animation YouTuber named Jello Apocalypse, who mocked the toxicity of Tumblr disguised as inclusion that a video begging his subscribers to vote Democrat in the midterms, <laughs> or when the, the fine bros tried to trademark reaction videos. Okay, that's a bit stretching it. Validation gangs usually see YouTubers with some degree of success or clout as either their leader or even a messiah because he, she has influence and something. Oh, I guess I didn't extend that one. That's my bad. But um, yeah, I just... This was pretty off the rails. Interesting yeah. take. Uh, people see me as a messiah or a leader. Okay. I'm going to nail you to a cross now. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you come back. It would be really awkward if you so didn't. So I'm, I'm going to read this one. They find it amusing. Can't wait to see Mola's 10 hour long response. Edit. Mola, I know <laughs> that you're a slut for attention. And I want you to know that nothing you have said is in any way insightful and meaningful chrysitum. Chrysitum. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an editor's comment. Yeah, it's an edit, yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you've said. It's like he wanted to take this moment because he figured I'd see the comment to really get to me. So he's like, you don't say anything insightful or meaningful. It's like, nailed it. The, and I'm referring to your chrysitum. Fuck. <laughs> You're an awful chrysit mauler. I don't appreciate your chrysitum. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like... <laughs> it's just funny, Chrysitum. That's going in. My favorite part of that is Chris Chrysitum. But other than that, I do like the fact that we are literally about ten hours. Yeah, I was... almost on the dot. <laughs> I think we've almost made it. We might actually make it once we go through the super chats. God, oh, yeah, totally. de definitely. So the next what one. Um, wait, who was the last? P it was. All oh, right. So is this dust bullshit now, or am I mixing the old old? <laughs> I believe you're next, Muller. Oh, I just read oh, the wait, one out there, so... Ten hour response. Yep, all right, so it's me. Uh, Mahler is no Spock. He's the critic's stupid people. Even Mahler stop, doesn't stop, know Stop, stop, stop. He's the critic's stupid people. What does that even uh, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was just reading, but like, um, thank you for stopping me, because like, wow. It made me think about that and my brain blew up. I love comments like this. They make me smile. <laughs> He's the critic stupid people. <laughs> so, Mola, did you pick these out as like your favorite demo? Uh, so this topics? is a selection of main arguments that are being made, top comments, and then ones that make me laugh. And some right. of them are hearted by uh, Jack himself too, so they have his blessing. Uh, so, <laughs> Mahler is no Spock. He is the critic's stupid people. Even Mahler doesn't know his null bullcrap has indoctrinated his dumb masses. What? And now, <laughs> <laughs> and now I saw a true fan here defending him poorly. You! You only know about his shtick because Mahler thinks he is the Kanye West of <laughs> critics. And, quote, becoming cool like you want to be, but you can't be like him. You are too dumb to be like him. You will fail him, just as his fans do without knowing. You will fail him? What does that mean? <laughs> Can we see Darth Sidious performing this comment? <laughs> you will fail him. What does that mean? He's the critic's stupid people. 
The <laughs> Death Star will be fully <laughs> operational when you're free. <laughs> so, uh, next up, uh, will be Spud Boy. Okay. That one clip of him getting upset about how the movie cuts away after Luke asks, where is Han? Kind of shows you the type of critic he is. There is no need to vomit that information back at the audience and add nothing to the story. The edit saved time, and he gets upset over it. So, um, they're saying that watching Luke grieve for Han would be vomiting information and adding nothing to the story. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's like, oof, what a take. Uh, sure, man. Yeah, it would add Does nothing. Does the deleted scene still exist? The deleted, yeah, it's still there. It's still visible. Is it any good? It, it is good. I think it should have been the film. Have you guys seen it? No, I haven't, actually. Oh, well, you Which know film? It's The Last Jedi. <laughs> the Last oh. Jedi. No, no, no. Luke the deleted clip. Jones. Oh, the deleted clip. Yeah, I did see that. Oh, you have seen that. Okay. You haven't yeah. seen it, though? Um... I have not. I have not, no. Okay. Well, it's literally 16 seconds. So all you need to do is literally just click this. Give us, give us all 20 seconds chat. I'll even put it in the <laughs> chat. Everyone check this out and tell me that this should not have been in the film. I'm going to rewatch it. Oh, wow. It's like really good. <laughs> like yeah, Mark, Mark Hamill's really Mark good. Mark is really good. I know. Like, it's all those little subtle facial expressions he's got why, going there. Why would, they, why would they cut that? Why would they cut that? Saves indeed? time. Seen that was beautiful. It's only, it's only 20 seconds. <laughs> of all the things to cut, like, what? Uh, so I guess I'm next. Uh, the dude shitting on Lupita's character hitting a guy with a shoe is so funny to me because I just today watched a video where a guy who worked on the movie talks about the entire fight scene, how some of the stuff was done, and the symbolic significance of stuff like clothes the characters are wearing. Her hitting the dude with a shoe is supposed to symbolize weaponized femininity. <laughs> what? <laughs> Themes, boys! There are less, there are less silly ways to, to symbolize that. <laughs> <laughs> what do they think they mean? That femininity and shoes are intrinsically connected? Like, I mean, it's it's all about the shoes, was, you guys. Was, was the spear too much? Like, was it too uh, long <laughs> shafts yeah, could... of weaponized femininity too, too uh, telling? Was the shoe the proper way to do it? I don't... You could <laughs> use the that same the argument. The spears are awfully masculine. You could, you could <laughs> use the same argument to defend it if she literally choked a guy to death with her vagina. <laughs> it's good because it symbolizes weaponized femininity. That means it's good. Oof. And since these are sentence ones, I'll just get them uh, done. So, man, I remember when I critiqued things like Muller did. Glad I don't anymore. That's got 67 <laughs> upvotes. Um, so, this, this is something that's been used before. Just right used it. And um, a few other people do. They'll be like, my, uh, Mother's Basement said this to me, uh, this line where they go, I remember when I used to think like you, but then I grew up. And you're just sitting there like, thanks, Dad. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do with that? And but then I read a book. They think it's a valid point because off. they believe it, right? But it's just like, it doesn't <sighs> matter if you believe it. It could mean that you've regressed or that I haven't yet progressed. Either of those could be true. Or, you know, you've just changed without it being intrinsically bad or good. Sure. Uh, I hope cinema sense style criticism is bashed by enough people to die off at least a little. You might like my channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Check out cinema yeah, yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, check out so my channel. I'm curious, by the way, chat. Um, since we've now been going for like in excess of ten hours, is there anyone who's been watching literally since we started? Me. Mud boy. That's one. <laughs> that would. Uh, that well, would be me, actually. I asked that, and immediately Ooh. I see people spamming shoe milk, and to shoe be fair, that's a better response than what milk. I was expecting. <laughs> Weaponized shoe milk. <laughs> um, I was going to say, by the way, it's not that we won't trust these people saying that they have, but what I will say is that a lot of people will likely say it whether or not they have, because it'd just be like, yeah, I've done it. Um, but don't worry, I believe you, chat. I believe you. This has been insane, but it's been fun. Um... So, Mauler is an obnoxious, long-winded pedant who's obsessed with Quentin reviews, plus he's a reactionary chud. <laughs> That's got 142. I <laughs> just, like, what, what is this? Wow. Like, people have said I'm obsessed with TLJ, obsessed with my critics, obsessed with Quentin reviews, obsessed with, like, longness. 
just like, so anything that I do becomes the thing I'm obsessed with. It's like, cool. Well, what's, what's wrong with being obsessed with your critics? That means you're listening and you want to know what they mean. That's, well, they, they would say thing. I'm obsessed without listening. Okay. Also, also I'm a chud. Yeah, yeah I, I can hear him saying that. Unfortunately, chud, Rags right? Wolf aren't here, but this one says, Rags Wolf and Muller just come across as egotistical, pretentious pricks. And we'd probably be like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's, it. that's your perception. <laughs> Can't really argue. Uh, get ready for his 13 hour EFAP in response to this. We're nearly getting there, double noun. Give us a bit more time. <laughs> anyway, glad yeah. that there's people pointing out how poor Mauler's content is. I wrote a response to this one in his recent videos, One uh, with that being one of my main points. I plan on turning it into a video sometime so it gets noticed far more than the handful of people who know about it now. And so this sort of gives me a, a small impression of what Chase was talking about earlier. It's like, oof, are you doing this? Just try to give views? I don't know. Okay. I wish people's motivation was some form of like they actually wanted to address the points and talk about them, but hey. And I think this is the best comment in the entire selection. Shout out to Eric Taxton's cat, who has excellent comedic timing. Hey, finally something we can agree on. Yeah, I think that was a fair comment. I agree. It's got lots of other folks. You know what? This, we, we've found a place where both, both fan bases can agree. Yes. And that's, that's it. We did it. Uh, the rest now will be reading out super chats, and of course, um, I'm gonna go right from the beginning, which this is gonna take a while. <laughs> it's, it's been like ten hours. Um, Jesus Christ, I'm actually having to like load pages here. So yeah, it starts with January twenty. I'm gonna have to scroll on EFAP twenty two until it turns into twenty one. There we go. Watch okay. It, watch how you scroll up and it's like yesterday. Like, oh shit. <laughs> it literally is. It, literally it is passed yesterday. over. I started at 8, 8 p.m. Oh, and yeah. it's 6 a.m. now. <laughs> so, well, we just started after. Yeah. So, and Jay's been here the whole time, too. So, you know. We're, okay. I've taken breaks to literally just lie down. Cover. So, we're going to try and read these as fast as we can and address the ones as best we can. Unfortunately, Wolf and Rags are not here, so they can't answer the questions that are addressed to them, and I'm sorry about that, I really am. It's just that this is sort of the structure we try and do this with that works and is most efficient. So, uh, you couldn't wait two hours for me to be off work? I'm, I'm sorry, Jake. Uh, at Wolf, I showed my friend Lord of the Rings the first time, and his reaction after return was, how could they do my boy Frodo like that? Also, Mole, did you ever check out High Top Reviews? Hum hey, bleh. Homecoming vid. Kisses. I have not. And, um, I actually kind of wonder what Wolf would say about the whole, how could they do my boy Frodo like that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Do you mean that he dies? I feel bad because this person made this comment ten hours ago. But <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> to respond to them, I don't know. Do you think they're actually still here? Uh, Jay, let it be known your crimes against Cinnamon Toast are on public record. We will see you in court. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, as a fat, I'm offended. We did read that one. Why did you do this? I just wanted to watch Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, any thoughts on H Bomber Guy's transgender live stream? All I know is he did a live stream on Donkey Kong to raise uh, money for charity, I believe. So good for him. Yeah, that's that's fine with me in concept. I don't know anything else about it. Um, good for him. I think like he got a couple of uh, celebs there too, so that was uh, I guess that was pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, good I, on I him. also like the shots he took in his announcement. Oh yeah, that was funny. Was it? You, I imagine you've seen Father Ted, right, Mark? Yes, uh, but I haven't seen it in ages. I generally just like for me, it's like a Christmas tradition that, uh, or like you know, generally when I am home with my family, at some point watch Father Ted. It's not a tradition as really as much as just an inevitability because we all. Mm -hmm. The mm, writer is a big, big cunty boy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, who <laughs> spends basically his entire time now on Twitter just uh, raving about how much he doesn't like that people are trans, and I'm like, that's not very nice. Uh, so or if he, he thinks inspired... you're not very nice, Jay. Well, he probably does. All right then. Um, don't quote me on this from Bilbo Baggins, which that you know, wonderful. Uh, Jack Saint video T too long didn't watch. Subjectivity man good. Objectivity man bad. Gotta put Long Man Bad in there. Uh, what Lewis said about the Parkland kids was perfect. They were victims and suddenly they uh, paraded around like they're experts in gun violence. What the fuck? They're being used as pawns to pull emotional strings. How uh, sure that you knew everything you were at? Were you? Sorry. How sure that you knew everything were you at 17? 
Um, yeah, I haven't heard enough to comment on um, what that scenario is, but I think that might have been a reaction to what Chase said about it, um, being that it's better to have the information on the topic before you talk about it sort of thing, which I guess I just said. So, uh, the, they were the um, the Streamlabs ones, so I'm back on the actual uh, uh, Super Chats now. So, Jared is jello, right? He's sleeping in a fish tank. I don't know if that's a part of the law. I'd have to check it. I saw Aquaman... I know he eats a yo-yo. Yeah, that's true. Um... I saw Aquaman this weekend. Wolf, garbage and ridden with plot holes as expected. I laughed my ass off at the submarine scene at the beginning, though. Well, you'll enjoy the coming video from Wolf. Sharks are mostly cartilage with only bones being the jaws, teeth, and spine. And look how well they swim. Oh, that's still addressing the initial comments about a jelly man flying through space. Or it's the sky. This is still far back. Um, as in long and arguably apparently in deep movie critics. What are your thoughts on the Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy? I love all three of those films. Um, and I think they're really well written. Uh, one being a horror comedy, one being like a drama comedy, and then the third being a thriller comedy, I suppose? Hmm. They're, they're all uh, they're, they're interesting as their um, approach, and I, I just think they're awesome films in a lot of ways. Thanks for getting me on The Witcher books, Wolf. I'm sure he would say uh, he's glad to get anyone to do that. Um, I didn't know until recently that Rags was friends with the quartering and by extension Review Tech USA. Quite possibly, yes. I'm not sure. But anyway, guys, here's some money to buy some Rhino Cream. Rhino Cream? Yeah, that's it. Sheave Baggins. <laughs> it's Creepy Sheave. Good old Creepy Sheave. Thank God you're back. Missed you. We Well, this should tide people over for a while. We're probably not going to do an EFAP now until like next week. <laughs> Late next week. I don't even know. How ironic to be seeing a former critic of Mauler joining the EFAP on a video critiquing Mauler. Good to see you, Spino Rhino Milkman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's. I can, can. I'm sorry. Can I just hear that again? I need. I need to be reminded of those brilliant words. Good to see you, Spider slash Rhino slash Milkman. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I. I'm happy. I'm impressed, honestly, that I managed to go the entire like. Il almost 11 hours now of this stream without seeing something uh, questionable enough to become its own meme again. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been efficient somehow. I'm not even sort of certain of how. JJ's big book of flight, what's that about? What? <laughs> I'm assuming oh, that by the was way, on Twitter. Um, Jack is still on Twitter taking snipes at the stream. That's um, and wonderful for him. He said 30 like odd minutes ago he said, uh, lol, I checked back after finishing the movie. They're still whining that I don't want to debate. So I, I muted my mic for a while. I went back to see what it was you're actually talking about at that point of the stream, and it, it wasn't that. So he's essentially just gone. Uh, surprisingly, he said something. You, you're cutting out. <laughs> What you uh, how much of that did you understand? Uh, well, the part we missed was you said... Well, I, th I think what you said is he's claiming X in the part of the video he would be in is Y. He's taken, he's saying something is happening when it's not happening, which is a huge shock. He's saying that we're still... Uh, or I think it would have been you at that point. I think that's when I was having a nap. Uh, he was saying that you were uh, still whining about him, not wanting to debate, when that's just not really what you were talking about. You were yeah, no, at um, I mean... Uh, what have we said on that? Basically, just that um, uh, we're not letting Rags get booted, and that was a while back. That was when Rags was here. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't have a huge desire to debate Jack. To debate Jack, sorry. Uh, it's it, the video is very uh, disingenuously made. I don't know. Like it's 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 complicated. Um, Essentially, if you were to debate him at this point, that would be doing something for him. You don't have that at all. There's no obligation there. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would like to see it, so it just depends on how he is in PMs. But, like, with the amount, like, the sheer amount of sniping he's doing, I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I don't believe you're doing this because you want to figure things out. Again, he's, he's, his arguments could be applied straight back to him. Just, oh my god, they're still whining, he says, as he continues to whine. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking, oh speaking goodness. of that, uh, Jenna just said, I'm surprised there's no new memes, says JJ Binks. <laughs> I, that's not something stupid I said, to be fair. <laughs> that's fair enough, that's fair enough. How did that start? Did I, did I just see someone say that in the chat? Uh, I think someone said Jay is like Jar Jar Binks, in that, at first... Oh yeah. 
Something like annoying, but it makes sense for him to be here. I don't know, like that. And then someone said JJ Binks, <laughs> and he was done. Um, that was a good meme. I liked it. Aren't all blaster weapons miniaturized Death Star tech? Aren't all people miniaturized Jared beings? That is definitively true. Long critique is not deep. Makes a 50 plus critique counted F for Mola. I mean, that's the thing. He's already counted me before I even made my response. He's playing 5D chess. I saw this train wreck and I'm working on my own response video to it. The disingenuous nature of it is infuriating. Have fun tearing this apart. Well, if you st are still making the video, feel free to use the references that I put in here. Um, yeah, I gave up. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Uh, Mola, gay people come out faster than your vids to here's TFA part 2, question mark? So, my, what I've said is the expected release date for TFA part 2 will be the end of February. I still haven't finished the video, but it's another hulking task. The editing is taking ages on it, and, uh, obviously I've been not solely doing it. There's, there's EFAP prep, and there's, there's, there's other appearances. We did, like, the, the monkey one, whatever else, but I am working on it, and I keep updating the Patreon to give people, um, a source on what's, what's being covered in it, but yeah. End of February is what I'm hoping for, and the reason for that is that I'm doing a lot of different um, things for the channel in prep for April. It's, it's, it's at this point I need to make sure those videos are good because of how much everybody keeps saying they're looking forward to the April Fool's video. It's like, oh shit, this is, they better actually make a good April Fool's video. So, um, what if the April Fool's Day joke is that you literally don't really... They would be fooled. <laughs> well, I'm assuming you said that if, what if I didn't release a video, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, sorry, am I still cutting out? Like, fuck. It's it's weird, it cuts you out on the seriously important words. Like, <laughs> if it only cut you out on a different word, I'd probably be fine with the sentence, but yeah. Uh, I got what you said, though, it's okay. And yes, that would that would subvert their expectations. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mulder is cosplaying as Harry Stewart from Deadly Premonition. I don't know who that is. Oh my. Uh, I get it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, Bezos is listening, Jay. Uh, I'm sorry? Bezos is listening? listening? Yeah, oh, is yeah. that... Hang on. I will recognize them by their profile picture. That's that's how I remember people. Is um, I, th I think that, I know who you are, but I remember pictures, not names. Sorry. I'm, if you're the person who speaks to me on Twitter all the time, then I know it's you. Okay. Uh, so, so Patrick said, I'm new, be gentle. Ever seen Full Metal ja Jacket? Uh, yes, I like it a lot. All right, then. <laughs> Skull on Wheels Man Long calling it now. Oh, wow, that person called it early. Well done, Nick. Jay is right. The only way to provide truly objective film critique is to have never seen the film at all. That's <clears throat> that would be truly objective, because you wouldn't have any emotional stake in it if you've never seen it, right? That is true. That is true. Rags isn't just a guest. No, he's just a guest. Completely. Uh, he's only been on like one or two EFAS, so. He just I mean, look, he's gone now, so. Um. Rags is required by law to show up at least once for every EFAB mauler and the gang got some kind of dirt on him and they're using it to blackmail him. <laughs> Catching an EFAB live won't be able to stay for the full 8 hour stream. 8 hours? Pfft. What an underestimation. But I'll listen to your work tomorrow. Anyway guys, rub one out for Jared. <laughs> is it gay that if you bone a man but I imagine it's a woman? Rags, tell me the secrets of the big gay. I would have to get his opinion on that. Um, if I'm afraid I can't speak for him. Watching on delay, but woof, I like your book. Can't wait for the third read when I'll never be bored. Moolah, TFA part two when? Rag, Fallout video was great, and Jay, happy EFAP. And he put Rhino Milk. Yay, thank you. I, I enjoy Rhino Milk. Um, people, I've seen people think that I would get tired of it. Um, <laughs> I enjoy it more every time I see it. And, That's not uh, even me being facetious. I, I genuinely still enjoy that meme. I'm surprised it hasn't died yet. It's, it's going strong, and it keeps getting revived by new milk sources. Yeah, today we had shoe milk. That's that's probably the peak of milk in this stream. Shoe milk. Um, uh, I think last stream we had earth milk and xenomorph milk. Earth milk. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Uh, it's not a real stream until Rags is intoxicated. Well, I don't think we got there, but we did in spirit. Holy crap, that was at the beginning. Um, I know. Mauler, I'm writing, if you go by the scroll I'm doing, we are now a fifth of the way through, according to this, but I don't necessarily trust it. Um, I'm writing a book and would genuinely be interested in paying you to read it and critique the plot, writing a story, would you be interested, and if so, how could I contact you? I generally say no to those requests, and it's just a general rule I try to keep to make sure I remain fair, but um, like I really appreciate that you would think that I would be good f to, to do that for your work, so... um, I, I'd be happy to for no money, that's fine. There you go. Try to get Smudboy on Twitter slash his channel, and he'd happily give it a read if that would be something you'd be interested in. Um, 
Uh, Rag Huta beer on stream. Defending TLJ is like defending Satan. <laughs> 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 Surprise, Illy Efab, nice. And it's Eric Taxon. Oh, sweet. Looks like Revenge of the Nudes is getting taken down in this one. Uh, I th genuinely think it's easier to defend Satan than TLJ. That's that's just because I think Satan's not that. Yeah, Satan, Satan's right. a fallen angel, so he's got a bit of a character arc, you know. It's like he's yeah, good I mean, ones. He was rebelling against the tyrannical guy who was like, "Everyone must worship me and do everything I say." Satan was like, "Can we like not?" I think he's all right. Yeah, I think I think you made a really strong defense. I I'm actually pro Satan at this point. Oh, the Bible has too many clips. plot holes. <laughs> it, it, so true. See, uh, the only people who are going to be offended by you saying that are fanatical Christians, and I, I doubt you have many who would want to, like... I'm sure they'd be able to take that joke, even if they were fanatical Christians, right? <laughs> like, if the whole stream has been about how people are taking jokes too seriously with the whole insult thing. But, maybe, yeah. um, Satan has better themes. Do you think we all deserve a frame picture of Mola? Wink, wink. Oh, that is far back in this stream. Fucking are you, hell. Are you guys excited for Heat Blur F14 Tomcat in DCS world? I have no fucking clue what the hell that's <laughs> referencing. That was just a lot of words in an order to me. I'm going to say yes, I am excited for that. Uh, Rhino Milk. Spent last week watching all EFAPs. My body is ready. Well, <laughs> you've got another like week's worth already. Um, also, Wolf, please, I need your vids like Quentin needs soy. It's on the way. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard um, of the Yakuza? Go ahead. Soy milk is good for you. I, I, I mean, I just, I, you know what? Fact. You, you, Jay's admitting that he drinks only soy milk, guys. I literally do only drink soy milk rather than cow milk. Um, and that's not a joke. So that's why I believe all the things I believe. Uh, that explains why you don't watch movies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you guys ever heard of the Yakuza series? They just ported most of them to PC recently. Yakuza Zero alone oh, is really? one of the best games I've ever played. I've not played it. That's them. amazing. I don't know if any of you guys want to talk a bit more about it, because I, I got no reference. It's pretty wild. It's fun, exciting, it's silly. It's over the top. Well, yeah, we very great. Uh, I feared there wouldn't be a real EFAP, even though there was a GFAP? Thanks for the mountain of entertainment, you mad lads. Oh, yeah, I guess if the gaming ones don't quite count, then we got this one. Don't you know, Doom's brutality is bad and it's a power fantasy, but Mortal Kombat is okay because it gives you a feeling of pride and accomplishment. <laughs> yes. Lindsay Ellis crowdfunded hundreds of dollars for a forum for her Shez Apocalypse website that never materialized to give you an idea. I don't know anything about that specifically. Um, but he was just citing some of her video essays are relatively strong. And I, I've liked some of her video essays. Some of them are insane, though. Like, it's, it's complicated. Um, depends on the references, is probably what I would say. A bit late to the show, but level your individual channels and content, and fap oh. on good sirs. Also, started Ori in the Blind Forest last night, and good lord, what an amazing opening. I do love that game, and it's one of Wolf's favorite games of all time, so. I just want to make it clear to everyone uh, putting Satan Milk in the chat that I appreciate. <laughs> I think that's a fine addition to the milk collection. <laughs> it just doesn't end, because it makes you think, like, what would Satan milk be like? <laughs> There's a finite number of emojis they can use for this. Eventually, they will we will get there. Ah, they'll just they'll stay clever. They'll keep it up. Uh, Eventually, it's just going to be like the the different kinds of people milk. So it's going to be like white woman milk, white woman with brown hair milk, black oh man milk. That that's my prediction for EFAP. Beautiful. Mola's videos are thick. Uh, did I miss anything? And they posted rhino spider milk. Sign of a woman you get to look at shades. What is a top hat, smiley face? There's a lot of a lot of memes in there. Forget AIDS Skrillex. That's AIDS Ed Sheeran. Enough. The reason why criticism may be long is due to the expansion of points. If I were to say Devil May Cry encourages player expression, we would then need to explain why, which can take a lot of time. That is honestly a fundamental take on why things can take longer than some things. It's how much you want to explain and how much you want to qualify. Like you can keep going forever, typically speaking, because every single word could be defined and explained, and it's all arguably relative, but it's just like, the standard you'd want to keep is just make sure they understand the terms you're using, and then you use logical steps to use the things you've defined to reach conclusions conclusions that are defined too. I'm slowly starting to slur because my <laughs> brain clock is running out. <laughs> You guys seeing the chat at the moment? It's devolved so far. It's just pictures of milk. It's, it's, it's <laughs> just, my favorite, is my favorite one is 
Now they've got me picturing that Satan has udders. God damn it, Chad. Is that bride milk? <laughs> My favorite one is milk milk. <laughs> milk milk. That's when it's become a full circle meme. Um, I hate Taxon so much. I hope he goes to McDonald's and orders a Big Mac with no pickles, but then still puts pickles on it. Okay. <laughs> damn. Um, That's savage right there. I like my YouTube reviews like my wieners. Long and aimless. I was watching Rags' older videos before this stream, so here's five dollars. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Uh, we found the British Tommy Wiseau, guys. I encourage length. Mauler Baggins. This is true. Can someone draw Mauler as Mon, mon Mothra? Moth, mon mo, Mothma? Mo, what is her actual name now? It's made me forget it. I want to say Mon Mothma. It is Mon Mothma, right? He said Mon Mothra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he it as well. That's that's quite an artistic thing to draw as well. That, Mon Mothra, see, yeah. Mothra crossed yeah, with Mon Mothra. Draw Mon Mothra, but it's also Mola. <laughs> Mola's <laughs> face, Mothra's fucking body, but with a style of Mo Mon Moth. <laughs> this is too giant hard. dress. <laughs> uh, you're a lot. You're like a less gross plinket, Mola. Why? Thank you. The age-old quote: "A picture's worth a thousand words," and then he complains that you may go over in a word count and beyond if it can't be worth more. Wait, you're pointing out how uh, uh, Jack is inconsistent? That's ridiculous. As long as Jared Genesis support you, we too. Yes. Wait, what the fuck did he just say? Oh, I'm not sure what that's referencing specifically. I'm only here to spend my dad's money. Take that, dad. <laughs> <laughs> how dare how much money was that? That was five dollars. So wow. That dad's going to be furious. How dare that's Eric cool. try and emulate Weird Al? Game theory is Eric Taxon, Jared Genesis's autistic cousin. That is offensive. And now this is a bullying stream thanks to that super chat. Yep. So, well done, person. Gosh. Uh, draw me Jack like your transsexual girls. Beautiful. Oh. Uh, oh god, pedo Jesus has returned. See, this is what I mean. It's like the kind of thing you read it and you just go, <laughs> so, You're automatically a monster if you laughed. Uh, keep making great content, guys. It's been interesting listening during my film school work with dealing with all the no objectivity in film and must subjectivity. I'm glad we can provide an outlet, at least, for, for the people who feel like there's not enough of it, I suppose. Citation needed. Literally all of your critics' points nearly all of the time. I mean... <sighs> Jay, make a video that's harsh on me, but that's fair, just to, so that we can finally say that one exists, okay? Sure. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> Is it possible that Eric managed to be worse than before? He generally seems to think he's right and will do anything to slander people who disagree with him. I think he was better I he was here. Better. I think he's better here than the wolf video. The wolf video, he's like running away with an idea that came from nowhere, while here he's he's like so close to getting to what I actually believe and and project. He just misses a few bits, while Jack is just in a different <laughs> universe. <laughs> You're objective, but not really. It's like what. <laughs> It's like, oh, but, but, but why though? But wait, Eric, wait. <laughs> it's like, no, he's gone. Um, <laughs> so please tell me you're going to bring up the sniper, Quinton. His comments in the video are so full of it. I question what reality is from. Um, so I put out a tweet. It's on my profile. I'm not sure how late it is, but it's one with a, a comment from a quote from Quinton. And he basically says that Rags is obsessed with him and that Quinton didn't really do anything other than address an argument in a different like scene that was still valid. It's just demonstrably wrong. It's not what Quentin did. And um, to finish the quote with saying Rags is pretty much obsessed with him, and Quentin says that if Rags continues, he's probably going to snap. Like, Quentin believes <laughs> Rags constantly snap? thinks about him. Quentin, that's <laughs> not what's happening. Like, I'm sorry. We got a, we got invited to come on State of the YouTube, and we were like, do you want to, do you want us to speak about like what happened with Quentin and you know address the Quentin podcast they had previously with him? And we did, and that was that. And so it's like, ah, oh, you're obsessed. It's like, no, 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 it was a topic, but okay. Um, but yeah, he's good old Quentin, you know. I've been trying to write stories with a diverse cast. At uh, least I attempt to focus on motives, interests, and even try to make a race and gender matter. It is an insult to me when people hire based on race and gender alone. I think it should be insulting. It's, uh, it's counter to the, to the point of normalization. You're basically saying to them that because they're gay, they are special. It's like, that should be normal, not special. No, we, we we don't really care about like you know what you have to bring to the table. Are you are you gay? Are you black? That's really all we care about. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, that's that that would be tremendously insulting. No, stop thinking. Mola made a video that was big number long. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, take Someone my in the chat. 
Someone in the chat is saying, Jay, what have you done? Like really dramatically. And I'm really curious, what have I done? It must be the milk. Um, please elaborate. <coughs> the, there's loads of milk in chat. Do they blame you for this? <laughs> the no, milk has not stopped. Look at that creature right that they just created. This like I think a spider with a with a crystal ball. This says, "Jay, I can read the future." <laughs> that was one of my favorites. Of the e -fat memes. That is a strong set of emotion emotes to try and depict a spider. <laughs> the milk must flow. <laughs> Man, isn't there a Dune remake coming out soon? Still, I think so. Yeah, yeah. we shall see. Why is Wolf generic <coughs> sporting that generic face as an avatar? I know the Wolf character had been retired, and that makes me sad. But the Wolf medallion worked. It's a reference to Tonal Gloke. Go to EFAP twenty one to understand the context. No, EFAP. Yeah, EFAP twenty one because EFAP gaming is a different thing. Ripley was a character and became an icon. Ray, on the other hand, was designed to be an icon but wasn't given the character to back it up. Agreed. You know what? Here's my money. Fuck Jack and Eric and everyone like them. Instead of coming on and actually talking like rational humans, they'll snipe and lie on the side or on Twitter. Fuck them. I mean, they seem to... There's, there's, there's a weird thing there. Like, it seems like they would have come on if it's just me and Wolf. So to say that they're not willing at all wouldn't be quite accurate. But I mean, they, they, I don't know what their dealio is with rags. Um, well, I would say that there's nothing wrong with wanting not wanting to debate something like that. Yeah, that's... Uh, but I think the way they're doing it is the problem. Well, uh, they've taken an action, and I have committed to the opposite reaction, yeah. as in countering their thing, so oh. now we're completed. So now it's up to them if they oh. want to debate me on my points, or if I want to debate them on their points further. I'm not that interested, just because of really exploring this. And it's, it's weird, when I explored this personally, to get the references, I wasn't as concerned, outside of, like I said, I hated that ending. But watching the rest of it and establishing where they've taken stuff out of context and seeing people react and, and how people feel about it, I was like, yeah, this is way worse than I felt about it just because I was just like, oh, he's mistaken. But it's like, come on. Um, and so, yeah, I feel a little bit worse about it now than I did before. And so it's just, it's just complicated about what I even want to do going forward. Because, you know, everyone always accuses me of being like the guy who demands debates. And in this scenario, I'm like, I don't really care to debate. Um... And if they're telling me, we'll only come on if you do these things, I'm like, oh, I, I don't know that I care to actually yeah. accommodate you. I, I would say drop both pretenses of criteria for doing a debate, have a third party, and do that if, they, if you really want to do it. Yeah, it's just a little weird. It's like that, it, it's not like they have, like you have requested to have more people on your team during this debate. It's like the show has always been you three, you know, unless they can't make it. But so it's like, why are you making them change their format to accommodate you? Well, that's what I mean. Like, it should not be one way or the other. It should be a third party who's the moderator. And whoever they want and whoever you want, go ahead and do it. If that's what's the big issue. And talk about it out. Like, don't worry about who are, you know, reading or watching these movies or whatever. Not Just sit down and talk. Um, if you really think your points are that strong, it's like, why would it matter how many are there? Exactly. I went to watch their video first so I could form my own opinion, but 13 minutes in and they've been so dishonest I dropped out, let's have a laugh. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I'd like to think that the EFAPs are entertaining as well as uh, breaking down these insane videos. A bit off topic if from the current video. Through. Sorry, go ahead. If you can make it through, that is. That's true. If they weren't entertaining, people wouldn't fucking spend 10 hours watching them. That's true. No, That's they're true. all wrong people, remember? <laughs> <laughs> they're all wrong. They're all long man bads. Uh, a bit off topic from the current video, but any are any of you more excited for the King of the Monsters than Endgame? Probably not, but still curious. Yeah, not for me personally, but I'm still interested in King of the Monsters. Anyone else want to do a take? Oh, the, the only no reason idea. Oh, so King of the I Monsters is the Godzilla movie that's coming out. The only reason oh, I really? about that is oh. how excited I've seen other people about get about it, which would make me assume that there is something to be excited about. I thought the trailer was neat. Um, I just care more about Endgame, obviously. Uh, but I'm interested in seeing the new Godzilla. Yes, yes I am. Um, what's wrong with his face? Hashtag save the cat. Here's some dollar for Rhino Milk. Always enjoyed all of y'all's long videos. You are the epita, ep, epitomo wait. That's a reference to another podcast of objective content. I'm not sure what that reference is, I'm afraid, but fair enough. Is that, uh, the right opinion? No, it couldn't be. I don't think he does a know. podcast, does he? Oh, no, I'm not sure about that. Uh, the odd pacing subverts your expectations, so it's good. 
If anything, they're using rags as an excuse not to come on. Uh, I don't know that for sure, but I mean, I just, like, I, we've already said what we feel on that one. It's literally your podcast. If anything, it should be by your rules, not theirs. You're the three hosts, and that's it. They can't ask to, can't they ask to bring on a third? Yeah, if they want to, that'd be fine. Um, the biggest plot hole in the whole current Harry Potter movies is that the American wizards have not found a way to combine magic and guns. Yet again, the English underestimate us. Oh, the American wizards wouldn't have made guns and magic a combo. I get it. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how that would be possible. To Wolf and Mauler, Eric Taxon is like your guys' version of manatee individual. Need some fan art of Photoshop of mana Taxon. Thing is, I, I wouldn't want to paint him too much of the villainous character in this one, because like I said, it's much more Jack than it is Eric. Yeah. Now uh, the next EFAP gaming should be y'all playing one of the old EA NASCAR games. It'd be really funny to see you guys crash as you try to get control. There's lots of potential for EFAP gaming, I'm not sure what we're going to do with it, but um, it seemed like people really enjoyed it, so we'll definitely try and think of what other potentials we have. A haiku. Do you want to say, sorry, um, I want to it's now what ten to seven uh, in our at least in our time zone. <laughs> uh, we started at eight. There are going to be people who were watching us yesterday, uh, <laughs> fell asleep and have woken up now and have noticed that we're still fucking going. <laughs> well, people have said like, Wait, "Am I going to do a twenty-four hour EFAP for uh, the hundredth episode?" And I was like, "Fuck, we might do it before the hundredth." <laughs> Just like, <laughs> like, like... <laughs> oops. Oh, it looks like someone in chat said they actually did that. <laughs> if you yeah. keep rotating the part, if the the past, the cast, uh, it wouldn't be that hard. I, well, it would be hard, but it would be manageable, I think. Yeah, I think it's possible, and, and I would happily out. try and make the full twenty. I mean, I have to because I'm streaming it. <laughs> It'd be pretty awkward right. if I just gave up. Um, you know, I I wonder if you literally just used like basically everyone who was willing to come on as part of it. How long you could make a stream go on for with people like dropping in and out? I think it would be possible, and I think we might try and do it for the 100th episode, it'd be cool. That'd be pretty sweet. I'd, I'd We're indefinitely fab. Yeah, we'll have to like keep find a whole selection of videos to respond to. We'd have to throw down with thrust in there. It'd probably be like a, a cavalcade of the classics. We'd have one from everybody we've covered previously that's short or something. Although our break's allowed. Absolutely. It would, be a, it would probably be seven and a half hours, half hour break, seven and a half hours, half hour break. Just because we have to split the streams up anyway. Sleep is for the week. Would that count as a 24-hour stream at that point? I don't know. Too complicated. But yes, fair enough. A haiku. Objectivity. Better than cold rhino milk. Running down Wolf's chin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone explain to me what exactly Eric Taxon is? Um, he's a human being who has an issue with me and how I address media. That would be the explanation, I think. What kind of role do you hope Captain Marvel will, won't play in Endgame? I'd... It depends on what her movie's about. I do not want her to be the sole reason everything is okay in Endgame. That'll ruin it for me. I don't particularly like the idea of her saving Iron Man, but I think that's probably going to happen at the beginning. I really want him to build his way out of that situation as a big circle around from how he starts. It would be awesome, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think she'll save him. And if she ends up beating Thanos, oh, it's going to be tough to watch con con compared to seeing the original Avengers beat him, you know? Um, so that's but if she's done well, it could be good. Like you could, you could still have that be the plot and find out actually it was executed fine. Well, if someone said, "What about both? What if it's the Avengers working with Captain Marvel?" I'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that totally. could work. That could work." Pens. I mean, she's clearly going to help in the fight. She's going to be an important part of it, no matter what. I mean, yeah, she's like super OP. She's like the most OP person who's on the hero side, right? She's more OP than Thor, what I heard. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the impression we're getting from like the trailers and stuff. So yeah, we'll have to see with that one. Greetings, gentlemen. EFAP has been very helpful to me while I work at the shop where we cut quartz glass parts for silicon chip etching machines. Always provide me at least half, 12-hour shift of work's worth of relaxing content. That is awesome. That's um, really cool. Yeah, I'm glad we can entertain you, honestly. Uh, Jay, have you watched Return of Revenge of the Sith? If not, you live in a sin, son. I've seen all the Star Wars films. Don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> uh, Except the holiday special. Aww. <laughs> I subbed to Eric after his Paul Joseph Watson video. I also saw his music and I like uh, supporting new creators. After this, I'm done. Lying is my limit. Um, I, I know Rags and Wolf would encourage people to not uh, be subscribed. I'm not sure where I stand on the whole thing because I'm subscribed to plenty of people. I'm subscribed to Quinton. Like, uh, I like to keep up to date with 
what the arguments have been presented on what I consider to be the opposite end of the aisle. And just um, because you're obsessed with him. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I'm, I'm subscribed to a lot of people I regularly disagree with. So it's just, and if you like, you have a principle of you'll never support a creator, and by that it means watching their content. If you consider them a liar, then that is absolutely, um, you know, I, I wouldn't uh, knock anybody for that perspective. I think that's fair. I enjoy your as well. So I, I genuinely don't think he's lying. I think I don't think he's lying. I, no. see I think he's just wrong. I th yeah, I think he's just misunderstood what I think, or at least he thinks that I don't understand what I think, and he's trying to explain it to me. While Jack is a whole different story. I mean, I believed everything I said in my um, Black Panther video. It's 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 not hard to be wrong. I mean, I'm I'm wrong plenty of times. <laughs> Sorry, it's it weird. Um, I enjoy your work. Keep it up. Jack, you made something so shitty that 12 hours are required to expose its flaws. We, we, we've had a lot of breaks and a lot of random discussions, um, but it, it will be said that we spent 12 hours talking about a 50-minute video, and that is embarrassing. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Well, Literally keep, half the original cast. including the context that they kept leaving out. I know, it took a while to show all of it and then to re-show what their take on it was. I don't care if it takes long. I just don't care. Literally half the original cast at this point has um, essentially just dropped off. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised this, this me and Jay are still here. Like, it does surprise this, me. Uh, the stream has a 50% survival rate. Also, <laughs> we are halfway through Super Chats now. So... Well, we're actually does getting your close. Does your page automatically update when more? Also, I scrolled all the way you. down, loaded them all the way down until the oldest one. So now I'm scrolling up to them. So any of them that have come since I spoke about them, they'll all be ones I'll have to refresh for. So it's only uh, yeah. So I'd say we're safely halfway through, from what I can see. Uh, Aliens, Colonial Marines is greater than Soma. Great themes. I agree. I feel that Great nitpicks. Themes. I feel that nitpicks can show clear evidence that someone has been delving deep into the content and notices minor things they wouldn't have if they hadn't been so thorough in their work. The, the conversation on nitpicks is really interesting, uh, and I think that it's just casually used to throw a, a critic off. They're just like, no, nah, you've nitpicked, you're out. And it's like, oh. And the interesting thing Rags highlighted was that he considers the hyperdrive thing in TLJ to be one of the most like damning, law-breaking, film-ruining things. And there are people out there it happened on the Drunken Peasants podcast when we brought it up. Those things to a lot of people in the audience were like, that's a nitpick. It's like, ooh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, it's like, what do you consider to be things that aren't nitpicks? <laughs> it's like, I'm yeah. confused. Uh, hey guys, if you're looking for some humor for late night, look up Terrence Pop. Dude is hilarious. P.S. I love you guys. Fair enough. Rags watched your Fallout 76 video. First few vids I've seen was very impressed. Maz Kanata smelt of spin-off film before Solo's poor numbers. I'm sure Rags would appreciate that. Uh, thank you. G. I'm sure there's a good meme in Mauler Abridged. Mauler Episode 2 now. It's on the way. This vid's comment section reminds me of TRO. So much hate, even though he's just trash-talking you. I keep seeing but my themes all over the place. It's a great meme for this channel, but my themes. But a lot of people take it as we really don't care about themes. And it's like, it's not that. Themes are used as a defense for a movie that's bad. Like, all the time. <laughs> it's like, what about the themes that make sense? Yeah, but there's themes. It's like, oh. <laughs> Started streaming three hours ago, only 13 minutes into the video. I love this podcast so much. <laughs> well, there you go. We're only three hours into the Super Chats. Apparently. But, like I said, the it's it's we're definitely halfway, so I think they, they evened out a bit. Uh, Muller, how much longer will you make us wait for your next episode 7 video? It better, better be at least five hours long or I'm not clicking the fucking notification bell, damn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm afraid it'll be two hours, 20 minutes from how it looks right now, but it's on the way. Jesus Sin Sins. Okay, fine. So what is your favorite movie then? What is your favorite movie, Jay? Fuck, don't make me choose that. There are, there are a lot of movies I like. For a long time, it was District 9, just because entirely subjective reasons. That was a movie that I uh essentially completely fell into the stakes of it i uh genuinely didn't know how it was going to win really really want the uh essentially the protagonists to win but i fully believed that the film might not go that way and it is one of the best experiences i've had watching a film well wow. that's uh I, I there are a lot of films i like though and that is not i wouldn't say that's definitively my favorite uh by 
any means really. What's your favorite there, scene in that film? Too many to choose from. Um, the, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I like the ending a lot. Fair enough. Um, Titus said, uh, this can double as a counter to Eric's criticism of your editing. With your TFA critique, you stepped up your game in a way that matched the exponential growth of your channel. Every bit of the months of effort you poured into it showed. Bravo, Sue. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Um, he probably gets this a lot, but Jack looks like a ginger Skrillex. There's a couple of people have said that. Yeah. Um, as a brown-eyed ginger, I'm sorry if you'd have to suffer through this pure blood disgrace. <laughs> okay. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. This poor little tards don't like long videos, probably because they don't have the attention span to enjoy anything longer than a two-minute Gillette infomercial. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Topical. Oh. The Cantobite people might even be subcontracting maintenance work on bases, so Finn's rampaging between insurance and subcontracting may have made a lot of money for them. It's why it gets funnier and funnier the more you think about it. Video, please. <laughs> so it's like a donation to keep playing the video. It's like... We eventually did, I think. Uh, this is for Sin Sins. If any of the EFAP cast could satisfy your rhino milking fantasy, and yes, four players required, how would you go about having your needs met? Don't lie to me. Um, hang on. There are like several layers to that question. So, uh, clearly I'm milking rhino with, hang on. Am I milking a rhino with one of the cast, or is this like they are dressing as a rhino? I mean, he just said, <laughs> oh sat God. satisfy your rhino milking fantasy. I don't know how to interpret that. Is this a follow up to the time when you were asked to milk one for sustenance and the other for fun? <laughs> I remember that question too. Yeah, I, I wonder if that's a follow up. I'm not sure. I, I genuinely couldn't answer that. I, I would happily. You know what? Whoever consents, there you that's go. my wholesome answer. I've seen all three Bubby films. Yes, out of boy J. <laughs> That's a super chat. Uh, Eric Taxon, more like Eric Taxing my sanity. Oh. Oh, oh, got him. Then you got Eric Stewart has posted this three super chats of Ocean Man lyrics, the SpongeBob <laughs> song. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely agree with you, Wolf. Words can only hurt you if you let them. Being able to handle mean words is a part of life. Take it on the chin and grow up, Jack, you wet, cowardly dollop of monkeys. Wow, that's just <laughs> an interesting one. Beautiful, but yeah. Um, the whole it only hurts you if you let them, like, it's just, you just, you're never going to get anywhere on the internet if insults are where you draw the line on someone's character. It's like the second you do that, you're out. It's like, ooh. Careful, you better delete your Twitter history because there's probably something in this someone could use if that's your principle. I hope in your TPM critique you'll talk for at least an hour about how why Jar Jar is actually a good character and his existence is justified by the story. I don't know if I go as far as saying he's a good character, but he's not an inconsistent character. Um, just really annoying. I suppose it's kind of silly they make him a senator, or at least he has he has the power to suggest that Palpatine gets emergency powers. I'd have to really watch the film again to sort of figure that out, but it's strange that he's in that position, I always felt, because he's a dumbass, but... Yeah. I'd really love it we if the SF do... Debris was inv invited onto EFAP. Your unbridled praise rep reprise reminded me of SF Debris's video on the JLU episode, Divided We Fall. Does that for JLU here? Couldn't link. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people we want to get uh, guesting on here. I've not heard of SF Debris, or it's vaguely familiar, but... Um, oh, he's very good. Well, I mean, if he was interested, sure. <laughs> it's like, we, we were literally okay, okay with any guest coming on. Uh, obviously, the, the the whole debate things is another section. It's very complicated, but um, yeah, we like guests here. The easiest question is to, is to ask uh, who we wouldn't have on here. Mm-hmm. Rags your mum gay, and that comes from Creamy Sheev Palpatine. <laughs> the best name ever. Uh, Jack, you don't get to complain about Morley using the wrong clips when you don't provide them, not to mention you maliciously take him out of context. Agreed. Hey, Morley, and I'm Wolf, I love your Fallout 76 video. Here's oh, yeah, we, we did read that one out. <laughs> From your boy, Creamy Sheep. I'm sick of Jack and Eric. Let's watch Morley's videos. Maybe instead of sniping on Twitter, Jack should have put the evidence to back up his claims in the video. Yeah, that, that would have been preferable. Yes, of course. I'm watching from the shower, peak future. Not sure what that means. How can you do that? How how have you got a device in the shower? Teach me your secrets. Are they saying they have a spider in the shower? Uh, there are actually some. I, I remember going to a hotel once. There was a TV in the mirror. So maybe okay. that's how. Was that in Japan? <laughs> I've heard that's a thing in Japan. Yeah. Maybe. I, I I'd believe it. 
Uh, hey Wolf, did the Lovecraft reference at the beginning of Aquaman piss you off as much as it did for me? Is it the beginning of Aquaman? Because it's like he rides like a giant Cthulhu monster in that movie. But, um... Uh, that would be an interesting question. I'm sorry Wolf's not here to answer it. Um... Any of you guys play Monster Hunter World on Steam? If you or anyone else listening to the Super Chats wants a hunting buddy, add me. Um, his name is Mark the Cyborg. All one word, and Mark is M-R-A-R-C. M-A-R-C. We, we do play. Uh, occasionally. We did for a, we did a while ago. Yeah, we did once, right? <laughs> yeah. It was fun. Yeah, I like Monster Hunter World, yeah. I just haven't had time to play it. Um, yeah. Same. Uh... Jack can't remember his own videos, he just assumes he is always right, so he doesn't check his own content for inaccuracies, clarity, last six minutes. Yeah, it's interesting that, um, Jack said it was a collection of six minutes, and he refers to it as the last six minutes. Like, hmm, seems like you might be trying to move the goalposts a little bit there. Uh, Rags, I picked up on the theme of your Fallout 76 video, it's a broken train wreck. Hashtag themes. Yes, and that's why the video is undeniably good. Uh, because he has a theme in it. That's how that works, right, guys? I'm doing this correctly? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I just want to see who would win in a straw man contest between Quinton, Major Lee, Joseph Anderson, H. Bomber Guy, and Jack and Eric. I honestly think Jack destroys all of them. Oh, yeah. I don't think Hardcore. H. Bomber Guy would win that, because he, while he has done straw mans, he's, he doesn't do them consistently. Yeah. I say that, and I've only seen one. I'd objection. say the same for Joseph so, Anderson. Joseph Anderson is possibly the best one out of that selection. It's just that his own terms are, are really complicated and I don't think he sees any contradictions within them. Um, but yeah, Jack's easily the worst out of that selection. Oh yeah, it's numerous examples too. And they're strong, bad. Strong, bad. <laughs> strong, bad. <laughs> Jack and, and Eric's terrible show. Set. Great job. Had my first day of spring semester today. It was awful because the lab equipment broke. Thank you for making slightly less suicidal. Rag stream so I can give you the monies. I think he is planning to stream uh, very soon because he wanted to release the video first and he wants to do one Talking about Fallout in general, from what I've heard, so... It is on the way. I consider this video Welsh on English racism. It's true. So I commented on Jack's video about him taking you out of context, and he's asking for examples of him taking you out of context when someone asks for proof, even though his Twitter shows he knows. He... he what we've shown isn't enough for Jack, which means nothing is enough for Jack. So... I'm not sure, but I can't recommend anything at that point. Again, want to reiterate, leave Jack alone. I actually don't even think it's worth even sending him messages that are even friendly at this point. Like, just leave him alone. Yeah. Um, he'll use it against you, it's all he does. Jack the Strawman Slayer. Theme, theme is the gas. Structure the engine. Need both. Sure. I'm always get, I always get confused with analogies, like parts of a car that match to storytelling is... Um, Probably things I would change around, but I, I understand the point. There's an anime movie called Your Name that is visually stunning with decent writing. Fair enough. Woof, I would forward All-Star Superman for a greatly written comic for Western comics. Fair enough. And then Goku shows up and fights Luke. A good indicator <laughs> that themes are nebulous and are hard to argue for or against is that most English professors I've asked for the strength of a theme... Hmm. Argue for or against is that most English professors I had asked for the strength of a theme. I feel like that was going somewhere and I think it's cut off or something, I'm not sure. Uh, Muller, is the potential response to Nostalgia Critics Van Helsing review still a thing? Yes, it is. We did promise the Colonial Marines thing and people were like, that's never going to happen, is it? And it did eventually happen. These things are planned, we're getting there. It's just like, things trip us up along the way, but it's definitely still planned. Sorry to bother you is the only one I haven't seen. I will watch it on their recommendation to prove how close-minded and toxic the EFAP fandom is. Excellent. I recommend to Eric the Nazi Nutcracker movie Nutcracker 3D. There you go, people are giving him <laughs> suggestions. Eric, watch Alpha and Omega and discuss with Wolf. Fair enough. Oh, God. This one got deleted. I don't know if that's by a model themselves, but I can't see it. Uh, Mauler, weren't there supposed to be other parts to that Force Awakens commentary? What happened? No rush or anything, just curious. Oh, it's on the way. Six parts will be total. Part two is coming next. Hey, Mauler, are you going to discuss what's up between you and Turbo Button? I thought it was weird him and B-Mask disliking you, considering their content. B-Mask is refusing to speak to me. He really hates me. Uh, but Turbo Button did talk to me for about three hours, and I, th I as far as I can tell, I'm on good terms with him. Um... And like we were talking about earlier, Turbo Button agrees that I've got a principled approach when it comes to ethics, while his is based on how much it'll hurt someone's feelings. And as much as 
I think I said something along the lines of, like, I understand your perspective, but it's too inconsistent and it'll cause issues. He said that, um, you know, as far as he's concerned, it's a matter of you can be reasonable and take each situation as, as it is and react to how much someone is being hurt by what you're saying and stuff like that. So it was an interesting conversation. And to be honest, it would have been cool to have it live, but I think I'm on good terms with him, from what I know. Not B-Mask, though. B-Mask still hates me. What is a movie? A miserable little pile of visuals. Also, did anyone see Brawly? Uh, no, and that is a reference to Castlevania, is it? Symphony of the Night? Yeah. Rags the good dog. Stop being such an asshole, Eric. <laughs> I'd totally pay to be EFAP. Okay. What? I'm sorry? But what is the red car law? Oligan T. Hish. Yeah, that's from the April Fool's video. <laughs> <laughs> I need some Advil. This video is the epitome of it's easy to throw a pebble at someone. It takes conviction to shake their hand. Why is it so standard now for people to come out of the gate swinging? I, I guess it's a commentary almost on the state of uh, discourse, in a way. I don't know if it's a micro is YouTube a microcosm of the state of discourse thanks to the internet and the uh, the sheer amount of misinformation and information all at the same time. Maybe that's too deep for how long uh, we've been <laughs> doing this stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there's two movies without contrivances of equal length, how can we measure quality of both, which is better and which is worse? So there's two movies without contrivances of equal length. Um, what exactly do you mean by equal length? Or what is the length of a contrivance? Because, like, you know the contrivance that uh, Rose and Finn end up in a prison with the one guy that can help them uh, defeat the First Order in the, in the manner that they want while also getting them out of the prison is insane. That's, like, one of the biggest conveniences you can get, or contrivances. Um, there's people who will argue that Phasma placed him there specifically for that reason, and it just highlights the level of, like, fandom or, or, or like, worship they'll give the film, that they've invented a whole plotline that has no reference and could never even take place. How could Phasma know that they would be in that particular cell for parking their ship wrong, and if she was aware of all this, <laughs> then why wouldn't they have captured them on the ship beforehand when they got so close to the track all of it's just like oh my god stop writing stop writing you're ruining it <laughs> like you're making it even worse <laughs> um a complicated question i can't really give a stronger answer than that but it's uh it's complicated to sort of figure out a contrivance of equal length i, d I don't know i leave for an hour and more guests appear amazing see so we're getting through it guys all these Do guests it. episode Do 23 it. is the infinite war Infinity War of EFAB. Are you sure you can't sue for slander? I'll help you pay for the lawyer. Uh, <laughs> the, I believe the laws with slander are literally you have to prove they knew they were lying, which is, like, extremely hard to do. And uh, I, I don't want to sue somebody because of something they said in a video about my videos. It feels like I'm trying to ruin their life as opposed to prove a point. Yeah, and, and could you imagine the backlash of that? It's like it's just over YouTube videos and he's going to sue. It's I like, think it would be kind of deserved. I think that people should call me out if I sued somebody over something like this as opposed to presenting how they're wrong and moving on. Yeah. Uh, how the fuck is your format like CinemaSins? I don't know. I don't know why they... Whatever. <laughs> this was a choice. The Trank bit. Jake is make a scenario where he thinks you can be proved a hypocrite in his mind. If you criticize Trank Gill screwing up and Ray being a Mary Sue, you're a sexist hypocrite. So, what, the difference between never failing and then shooting yourself in the foot? I've, by deeming both of them stupid, there's no middle ground. Like, a character can't be absolutely retarded, but they also can't be a godlike creature. Um, that means Mola <laughs> thinks that there's no possible fucking female character to even have. It's like, okay. There's no middle ground. <laughs> Holy shit, I worked a whole shift, cleaned the house, cooked dinner, played with my daughter, and you guys are still going. <laughs> Looking forward to this. <laughs> Uh, you say the film is good, or you get the hose again. Oh, now I know that we're getting closer to the actual finish line here. Here's a few bucks for my favorite long boy, Mauler. Why, thank you. I mean, you could always piece your 15-hour saga in 10-minute shorts. Watch this as homework to prepare for your response. I'm glad it was so punctual. Um, yeah, I, I always wonder how they'd react if I made 10-minute pieces for everything I do. Do you think they'd, like, go insane? Or do you think that would be something they would be uh, more okay with? I don't even know. I no. think it might damage the structure a bit if you were. Oh, to I wouldn't do it personally because I think it does damage it. But I'm assuming how they'd react if they if that's the way I did it. I see. So if you split them in a way that means that they're ten minute stories every time, or ten minute uh, assessments that have a start, middle, finish. I don't know how I would even do that, but 
I wonder if they'd, they'd still hate it, of course. Um, yeah. I'll take your bloated content, full of context and thorough analysis over this vapid mischaracterization and reductionist straw manning always. Well, I appreciate that. I, I, because I consider it the superior content to what we've saw today. Uh, all I wanted to say is that the long man bad video has broken my mind and that desk bullshit is here. What the fuck, man? Go make an idiot box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it takes so long and I gotta go back onto an editor after I've just been done editing all day. <laughs> um, I survived both streams, baby. I'll survive more. Thanks for the laughs today, guys. Also, Smud, get on EFAP more. Love your content and appearance this year. I was feel oh, nice. Feel bad because it's like I wish I could have everybody every episode. <laughs> <It's like the laughs> we just have a hundred guests. It's like yeah, but yeah. Th there's so many people we still need to bring on for their first episode, while also bringing people back for you know additional episodes, and then changing up maybe potential combos and having the right content to cover for them. It's it's all very um trying to get things right sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you know I'm glad people enjoying the guests. That's good. I, I think you guys add stuff, so uh, you know high five. We spent 10, hour, 10 plus hours with the... Uh, oh, wait, I did read that one out. Interstellar commentary when? Oh, that's going to come, but it's not going to be a commentary. That's going to be a full-on critique. I have so much to say about that movie. So, I just had someone tell me that the Enlightenment gave us SJWs and communists, therefore we should go back to medieval feudalism, and yet this man was more intelligent than Jack here. <laughs> well, it can happen. Cheers to all who survived this ordeal. I disagree with that god-awful hair. Finally. Dude, I just saw y'all go live about eight hours ago at lunch, and y'all just finished. Laugh my ass off. Well, we haven't finished yet. <laughs> oh, they thought, we, they thought we finished when uh, you reached the stream limit. Oh. Well, not quite. Uh, so where do I pick up my I survived metal? <laughs> metal, sorry. <laughs> survived the whole eight, nine hours. Beat Saber workout. Oh, there you go. The comments are the worst. Oh. So many of them boil down to, it's art, you can't judge it. With such vigorous autism, Taxon makes me sad to be gay. Aww. Holy shit! Can some can somebody actually do that? Like, go play Beat Saber with uh, fucking Evap and I'm pretty sure, survive? yeah. It'll just be any audio source they can convert it into a Beat Saber oh, thing. Oh, I I don't doubt that it could work, but can somebody survive doing oh, that? Oh, that's a good point. For Ten hours playing Beat Saber? Holy shit! Yeah, I don't know if they could survive. That's gonna be ripped. <laughs> I really want to try that. Uh, Mola says objectivity is the degree to which a standard is met. How is this not subjective as well as being that art has no rules and different people have different criteria for what is well-crafted? So there are certain things that you can't get out of with storytelling because storytelling is a craft whether or not someone else says, I disagree with that. And you'd be like, who created this craft? And you'd be like, you can't... Um, so how do I put this? Like, you're trying to make... I think we, we said this on the last EFAP. Like, I'm going to make a curry, and you get a bowl, and then you start pouring in milk, and they're like, oh, okay, and then you put in some apples, and you're like, this is a curry? And they're like, yes, this is a curry. And you drop some pears in there, and, you, and you're just like, this, this seems like Cheerios, and you're like, are you making a cereal? And then they start pouring, like, liquid hot magma in there, and you're like, okay, now <laughs> I'm just confused. And it's like, my curry. And you're like, that's not a curry, though. And they're like, well, by your subjective standard, sure, but my subjective standard, this is a curry. And you'd be like, right... Um, yeah, it's a science as well as an art. Yeah, uh, there are standards that have been created and are in line. And um, at the very least, even if you thought that everything was subjective, if you present your standards and remain consistent to them, that is still more yeah. useful than saying there's no rules and everything is anything. That's way better than what we've been given, at least in this video. Yeah, and uh, but, I, but again, one of the most fundamental aspects of telling a story, progression... The reason we see the things at the beginning of a movie is usually because we need them to get to the middle of the movie, and that's usually because we need those to get to the end of the movie. If I showed you the last scene of Return of the Jedi, and that was it, or if I said to you guys, here's my story, Luke Skywalker defeats Darth Vader, but he doesn't kill him because he sees the good in him. That is my story. You'd be like, who, who are these people? And I'm like... <laughs> What, you don't understand? That's the payoff. That's the emotional... That's all I need, right? Do you think about the themes? You're like, I don't know who... What the fuck are you even talking about? <laughs> so, yeah. The, and and I understand the temptation to be like... It's all subjective, really, though. And it's like, just... You've got to take it really slowly and talk about all these things through. Because there's loads of loads and loads of... Storytelling is huge as a fucking craft. Loads of things to explore. And that's that's kind of what... 
EFAP in a way has been trying to explore casually when um, I'm still making my videos to explore it in a more coherent, straightforward manner. Even though I know loads of people would be like, that's coherent and straightforward. I'd be like, oh, well, you know. I know it's long man bad, but still. Um, is it possible for you to get Fat Man falling on stream more? Both of you make similar content, but somehow also vastly disagree on what is objective. I, I oh, did. what? Really? Wait, are you not aware of this? He really doesn't like me. If both of you have different perspectives on what's objective, that's pretty oh. strange. Wait, so the charge is that he actually agrees that objective exists, but he has a different take on it? That would be interesting. That That is, yeah, I'd be curious. Um, yeah, I mean, if he's, in, if, he, if he's interested, we could set something up. Hey, Chase Face, if you caved into peer pressure and licked milk off Mauler's six-pack like a bro, would you prefer chocolate, strawberry, or whole milk? Express yourself. I think you pick all three, personally. Um, he's either eating or asleep now, but definitely all three. To prevent was beings that, like... Who was that directed at? Chase Face. Oh. The guy who was here before he left. <laughs> uh, to prevent beings like Jack and Eric is the reason why some animals eat their own young. That's an interesting theory, but that's not objective. Just your opinion. EFAP trilogy movie when? <laughs> Maybe we should do that. EFAP 1, 2, and 3, and we can call them the um, Fellowship of the Fap, the Two Faps, and the Return of the Fap. <laughs> 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 I thought Das Bullshit was dead. No, he's alive and well, right here. Yeah, man. Typical Mauler, just because your nation has Shakespeare with stories retold for centuries means you're better than everyone. Talk about white power. <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> how do you know Shakespeare identified as white? Ah, shit, I'm pretty late. I'll have to catch up later. How's everyone doing? Love y'all. Mauler, your voice is offensively Welsh, a sleepy Englishman. Thank you. And, uh... Why, why don't you... Do you want to... You guys, he said, how is everybody? So uh, I demand you guys answer that question. Ah, uh, we're awake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, that's that's that then. I, I'm I was impressed by those answers. I guess I should answer it too. I am doing well. I am very tired, and I will be going to sleep after this. Uh, we we get to the end of the the. I was supposed to say the efaps, the super chats. <laughs> this is brain running on fumes. Thanks for great streams, <laughs> Fab. Mola's no Spock. Well, you'll know Joe did. Got him. Um, but yeah, it's, it sucks because I always talk about how I'm basically Spock. And I never use emotions, and, and yet people say I'm no Spark. It's so offensive, because, like, that's the only thing I ever try to be. Uh, this <laughs> is a serious question for Smudboy. If Mola caught you staring at his supple Welsh man butt, but can't, let, but can't let him know your true feeling and have to play it off, what would you say? I think you have me confused with someone else. That's a, that's a, a simultaneously meta comment, and it would actually work as an answer, too. So, um, I think that was a very clever response, but... Uh, aren't they the proponents for emotional storytelling? How can they? How can that guy actually say that cutting away from Luke was a benefit? His argument was that we knew it already. <laughs> that he was, we knew he was sad. So there's no point. I don't. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't follow it. Molly, your negative comments on the Star Wars and Lord of the Rings show that you have no idea what you're talking about. Unsubscribed objectively. Yeah, it killed my channel to do that. You madmen. Ten hours EFAP. Loved every minute though. Oh. I'm glad. Eve apps are like real-time strategy survival game. Fallout 76, eat your heart out. I mean, if you can yeah. survive. Oh my god, we're getting right next to like the last ones. Ironic, he could save others from long videos, but not himself. <laughs> go a four, go for a 24-hour stream and get it under your belt. Um, Adam Gardner posted a bunch of milk and said, "Cause I can." Sub to Jared, not Quentin Tarantino. I think he means Quinton. <laughs> Jay is right. I feel asleep and woke up again. Fell asleep and woke up again, and you are still streaming. Mm -hmm. Fell asleep halfway, had an EFAP dream. Don't ask. <laughs> Rhino milk. Taking a cue, a cue from Mauler, I sat down and took notes on my most hated film, Man of Steel. I have 10 pages worth of notes, mostly bad, and I'm honestly tempted to turn it into a video. Wish me luck. Go for it. Just fucking do it, man. I wish more people would yeah. talk about the subjects they are really passionately invested in. I feel like that's when we create our best work. Um, instead of being like, I don't know, Hey Mola, I like to take on TLJ, can you now do this movie that uh, I would like you to do? And then I'm like, I've never even heard of it. And they're like, yeah, but you know. And then I'm like, I don't know. If you see it, then you could be passionate about it. 
I'm not saying it's bad for them to do that. I think it's completely reasonable for them to ask. The, the end of the story was basically going to be that if I have no investment in it and I don't even know anything about it, and even if I watched it and it was the same result of no passion, it's just like, I could make a video, but it's just not going to be anywhere near as good because I won't care as much, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like uh, someone recommending a book and you're like, well, that doesn't interest me at all. Think, oh, it gets better. It gets better. And maybe it will and you'll keep reading it. But in most cases, you'll just be like, eh, the first chapter didn't really attract me. I'm going to stop. So mm -hmm. you have to have some sort of interest and passion to go through the whole thing. Yeah, it's like my no. friends recommended me like Game of Thrones. I'm like, well, I, I'm, it's not really for me. It's not my thing. It's like, but it gets good at season four. I'm like, I tried seasons one through three and I didn't like it, dude. I tried so hard. If you didn't like seasons one through three, then I'd say, yeah, you better stop because it gets <laughs> yeah. much worse. Uh, but okay. <laughs> um, uh, if you had to explain EFAP to a normal person or someone new that stumbled into the middle of it, how would you describe it? Um, a wholesome podcast where typically four people uh, watch a video and share what they think are the pros and cons of it. And then allow them to experience the memes without any context, just because it would be funny. EFAP has improved my life, thanks EFAP crew. Kind. Um, the streamed had lasted through my night's sleep. It's near its end. The last super chat says, Thanks for giving me something to listen to at work, guys. Do you mind starting around the same time tomorrow? I have another boring shift. We will. <laughs> Let's like do said, it. There's a good chance there won't be an EFAP now for the rest of this week and until the end of next week. So, um, be for a while. Um, and then Eric Stewart with Spank Me Welsh, man. Spank me until I'm <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and there we go, folks. It is completed. That is our coverage of... Eric Taxon and Jack Saints complete annihilation of my uh, my video. Um, I think the video speaks for itself for its quality. Filled with straw man and taking out of context, which was kind of the point of this stream to show uh, how we put things back into context, and then it damages their arguments, and it makes you wonder then where were these things when they created it, and you'd be like, well, I guess they just didn't, they just ignored it, or they accidentally missed it. Whatever interpretation sure. you want. So, long man, do you feel annihilated? Sorry, what was that? Do you feel annihilated? Yes, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> they got me. <laughs> uh, Mola, can I draw you a fasoda, please? You're welcome to do whatever you want, but, I mean, don't expect a certain reaction. I don't know what it would, might turn out to be. Uh, do whatever you want, Sylvia. Silver? Silver well, Luca. What, what, what would your fasoda be? Uh, well, the the only animal we've got is the Mulrus right now. Oh yeah, that's one hundred percent what it needs to be. Um, but whatever, whatever their imagination would like to use it for. Uh, so yes, thank you for anybody who who watched this far. It's insane of you to do so, and obviously thanks to Rags, Wolf, J, uh, Smud Boy, Chaseface, and Death Bullshit for all. Um. To, to, to arriving to, to do it. Um, I guess I should say that you, I, do you want to do you want to talk about your channels again? Because this is the end of this part now. <laughs> Why not? You know, I feel like it makes sense. Um, we'll go Jay first because this is the actual ending now. Jay, this is the one where you sure. got to really so, sell the channel. You know, I feel like I've overdone the joke of of saying that it's garbage a bit. Not <laughs> I'm gonna now say it's good. It's garbage. Um, I th I think that uh, one of my videos is okay, um, and that needs to be appreciated. Go um, and find that okay. one, guys. Yeah, well, that's honest of you. That's if good. You are, if you're interested in long, not long. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, 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 I've been up for. It. I know. I I know <laughs> uh, how you feel right now, Jay. <laughs> if you're interested in fucking, uh, essentially shorter form responses to uh, critics on YouTube who are uh, either saying some bullshit or saying something that I poke into, uh, then that's what I do. Uh, I'll let you decide if I do it well or not. Uh, spoiler, I don't. I'm garbage. <laughs> uh, Smugboy, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm still doing my KOTOR plot analysis, and I've been taking a cue from Mahler and do my own smud stream on Saturday at 2 p.m. EST. And some people have been calling it uh, uh, 
S frame of pause or some frames of pause? I don't know some why. frames of pause. Also, <laughs> I, I sorry, I fucked up the uh, the copy paste. There. That's his channel. I've attached S Bullshit's channel to it now as well. <laughs> Any other ones that um <laughs> the second posting? Yeah, he um I like I I think I said it the last time you were here, but I just you know an intro from if you like my stuff to jump over to uh, Small Boy's channel would be to check out his video on Patrick Williams. I would imagine because you can get a um another take on that. And then from there, be like, you know what? I'll try out anything that he's made because it's a, uh, it's like a primer from stuff. Maybe if you enjoy from me, um, and yeah, and then that's the podcast. So, uh, finally, that's bullshit. If you want to do whatever you'd like to do, uh, do you want? Do you want to? Would you like to say potentially pimp or just say hello? <laughs> Hello. Um, my channel isn't really for discussion or anything. I've dabbled in a couple of reviews on games I was particularly passionate about, but the vast majority of my channel is animation based, like Gary's Mod Animation. And I still plan to do that. I don't really think of, I'll go into Source Filmmaker for much. Uh, but I haven't uploaded anything in a few years now, so don't sub until I've stopped being a fucking pussy and uploaded something. So, uh, but if you want to check it out, if you haven't, if you think Gmod Animation is funny to you, uh, Give it a look, but you're not going to find a whole lot of discussion there. So it's, but it is what it is. I will eventually upload when I stop being a pansy. All right, <laughs> and I think that's everything. I hesitate to say it. <laughs> like there are some memes in the chat that I believe we haven't looked at. Memes. Yeah, let's in the go chat. through all the memes right now. All the videos. Let's do it. No, you mean memes in Twitter? Oh, there is something on Twitter. There is. Well, there's Longman the... Bad, of course. I put some memes in the Discord chat. The Discord chat? Oh, right. Okay, I can grab some of these. Alright, everyone, uh, talk about something random so it makes it look like I'm not wasting time to try and collect <laughs> these things. Well, I think there was a gentleman who wanted uh, to ask Mahler to edit one of his stories. I, I, I'd be happy to do that. If anyone has any stories they are interested in getting published or curious about how to do so on Amazon, I'd be happy to help out. I'd be happy to edit, get you going with that, uh, get you an editor. Uh, I've been helping some people out on my channel as well with that, so it's going okay for them. So, yeah. Anyone who has any scripts or manuscripts uh, like me to look at, I'd be happy to. I have one of those. Oh, really? Well, I say have. Um, I have a plot overview at this point. Oh, well, I'd be happy to look at it if you got it. <laughs> that would be absolutely lovely. Okay, someone just gave a, a super chat for Mahler and asked me about KOTOR 2. Um, I, I do agree, KOTOR 2 is better than 1, um, better, actual better themes, believe it or not. <laughs> um, but uh, but Kreia is actually one of the best characters in video gaming, I, I would say. And she's female. So it, uh, it works out if you're left-leaning or right-leaning, I don't really care. But it is really that good. It's made by uh, the creators of... Um, Fallout, so Chris Avalon, or the original Fallout. Chris Avalon was one of the storytellers for there, and he did an excellent job, and pretty much um, that is the definitive Star Wars game in terms of storytelling, in terms of lore of Star Wars, so if you love anything in the Star Wars lore or the Star Wars movies, you should directly head over to playing the original Bioware game, and then the Obsidian game. So KOTOR 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a couple of, of these, I guess. We got the first one. Um, am I missing context for this one? What's with the, the rhino who's like um, a blob of green? What's, what's happening that was right that? at the beginning of the stream when we were talking about how I had my bone, and then we talked about a boneless rhino. Ah, oh, I remember now. I like that there's an erect and flaccid version of this. Thing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And we've got a, a drawing that, if this was drawn up, Quickly, I mean, I say quickly over 12 however hours uh, of, of JJ Banks. Eason gonna be very messy, me no watching by, I think that says Trooper TK on Discord. Um, but yeah. I, I appreciate your work, Trooper TK. Little droid. Fair enough. I think you haven't got the little glasses on. And there. Just like this. Um, then the, the adorable artist who's made a few of these before, but so. Mauler. Face, Mon Mothma clothing, and Mothra as a back. <laughs> Adorable. How much be any avatar? That was from that's from Flawless Nico. Oh, that's that's pretty. It really is. They they make a lot of very cute little. Uh, there's like one meme per stream from what I can tell so far. And the thing as well, I mean, 
all of these, all the people making these memes, uh, but they they feel like memes. A lot of them. This one, uh, the Mall Mothma one, actually seems like something that you would see made just for artistic purposes. Yeah, yeah, they're really high quality. Some of these, it's amazing. Um, the, some of the some of the EFAP meme videos like surprise us. We're just like, wow, you must have taken a long time to make this, and it's all for the sake of memes. <laughs> Um, which is wonderful, this but yeah, my favorite, by the, way. the, uh, the long man bad, it says critique, baller, it's just this tentacle monster, and it's, it's, it's I think it's Jack sleeping, <laughs> like, having nightmares about the long man. You see, this is a physical notebook it's in, so I really like the idea that, uh, this notebook is gonna get, like, just put away somewhere, and it's gonna stay there for 10, <laughs> 20 years, and later someone's gonna find it, and look at this and go, what the fuck? Archaeologists will dig it up one day. This will saying? be the only surviving artifact of of our culture after the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? To study, study this to, and to the figure long out man our culture. Will become God. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to say that is the complete double E fab. Is we we nearly reached on the second part a length that would be considered a full E fab. It's, it's just yeah. twenty minutes away. So, uh, and that puts us. We're half an hour away from the full 12 hours, or at least we didn't start exactly today, so it's not necessarily, but I think we reached 11 hours. I think that's probably safe to say. Longest EFAP in history. You out, you did beat the eight hour one from Rags and Wolf, Jay, so me and you are the longest EFAPers. How about that? I survived. Um, but yes. But I didn't. I literally had to stop twice to have a lie down, okay, one of which was on the floor because I was feeling in Ill. chat. <laughs> He's the one who made the, uh, he's, it, it's, I think he said, his video is Star Wars The Last Jedi, like, is the, one of the biggest cinematic failures in history or something like that. And it's, I've seen that. It's a very amusing video. It's like 20 minutes of just rapid fire arguments about how awful the film is. It's the kind of thing I'd recommend if you wanted the quick version of, like, my five hours, basically. It's like, go for it, because it's, like, delivered quite funnily. But, hello, Vito. Um, we've been... The whole thing about guests, we've just been talking about, uh, you're, you're, you're definitely in consideration to be coming on here. I don't know if you're interested or not, I, but but we're getting around to it. I like your video, it's very amusing. Um, but this is literally the end of the stream. We've been going for uh, just over 11 hours, I believe. Nice to see you, but yes, uh, I suppose it's time to say goodbye, folks. Uh, thank you very much for all of the generous donations and the very kind comments of support, as well as just memeing along with us. It's very entertaining for us as well as um, creating content for um, for the channel and stuff. So, um, again, if anybody would still be listening at this point who really hates the channel, I'd just be like, the idea for these streams was to try and expose what uh, we, we're talking about when we say we're taking out of context. We did it for Wolf, for EFAP in general, and for my videos like three different times. I don't know what else I can do at that point. Uh, so the people who are concerned about me responding to criticism through EFAB, it's like, yeah, well, we're not going to do it all the time, but um, it should be down for a while now. I wouldn't be surprised if Jack made a follow-up video or something of the kind, and if it's the kind of shit where it's like, um, you didn't understand anything that I meant and all of these things weren't taken out of context because blah 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 blah, it's just be like, we'll probably just not respond. As we said at the beginning, 11 hours ago, there are a couple of videos that have been made that we've checked out and been like, this is too bad to explore. There's nothing to work with here. So, again, hopefully that's reassurance. Um, the next EFAP, I don't know what it's going to be about. I don't know who's guesting. And there's more EFAP gaming on the way. So, um, fun ahead, I suppose. Fun times. And, um, but yeah. Let's do the arrival debate literally now. We can, that could be the next E. Oh, could we do that? Jay becomes like practically a fucking tertiary member of EFAP at that point. He's like on, I on five of them. <laughs> But yeah, we do want to do that eventually, too. You have to set up your podcast before we can do that, right? Sure. Yeah, so we don't want to rush that. We've got to get that going first. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you all for, for, for coming and for all the guests. And I have to say special thanks to Jay for being able to make it for this long. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, I generally don't know how I've done it. And that's... I, I can't... I don't know how long I should say goodbye before I just end stream, so I'm going to I'm gonna do it now, guys. It's been fun, and I will see you around. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Good night, everyone.